You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. All right, we are live from Jake's Bait and Tackle for our monthly What's New at Jake's and what's happening for the month that's coming up. And for this month, we have November and we have a star studded guest list here. We have so many guests that we don't even have enough microphones to get it all done. So we're going to do a little housewarming stuff and then I'm going to shut up and let these guys start talking about what's been going on uh, with their lives on the water. Uh, one housewarming thing, uh, Mike Ortega of NVKBA, there's a benefit tournament coming up. I'm going to kind of share my screen real quick, get this. And do, 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 do. Here we go. So NVKBA has a tournament coming up. It's Heroes on the Water Benefit Tournament. It is a VA statewide team event from November 3rd to 19th. You do not need a membership for NVKBA to be a part of this. Uh, I'm going to drop a link in the episode description, and I'm also going to have Mike Ortega on a little bit later on this week to not only talk about the tournament, but how his club's doing and just kind of a year uh, year look back. There's another tournament that I keep forgetting is coming up that we're supposed to promote. Is it Martin something? Gary Martin? Larry Martin? You veterans know tournament. Yes. Yes. Is it Larry Martin? Yeah, he puts on the Veterans Tournament, um, Veterans Day Tournament. November 11th. November, November 11th. 11th. Larry Martin, November 11th uh, tournament. That's coming up. I'm going to put a link for that as well if you want to do that. That's at Lake Anna. Link in the episode description for that. And then also the MVKBA Benefit Tournament on the Water. You do not have to be a, Kai, a member of the MVKBA to join this month-long team tournament. Go check that out as well. Uh, please let us know down below if you can hear me okay. Everything's going good. Now, as always, we are going to have prize giveaways. The best questions of the night are going to win some prizes to Jake's Bait and Tackle and Chick-fil-A. Then we also have a, we are going to put up at the end of this live stream. I know I'm a little behind on this, but I'm only one man. We're going to take the five best photos from our Patreon members, and we're going to have them voted on, and we're going to see who's going to win a gift card for that as well. So without a moment ado, I'm going to get rid of my mic. And we're going to have all the guests lined up. So, Carla, you want to pan out here? Look at this. I'm not even a cameraman now. So, we have Jared Mounts right here. You know him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm Uncle Jed tonight for the Haas Cut. We're at Beverly Hillbillies, guys. <laughs> all right, this is your mic. Go for it. All Introduce right. everybody. Scoot out here and just... Hold on the comment section. Got uh, Lonnie Connor here. How's everybody doing? And Jason Ford. Good evening. And I'm these guys. West Virginia coach. Today. West Virginia. Yeah, Mountaineers. There you go. There there we go. Mountaineers. Before we get to Doc. There we go. You can close to your yeah. mic. There we go. Tell us real quick about your all's guide service. Uh, we started it last, last year. Uh, and we've actually had several trips the past uh, couple months. Uh, we're looking for those for those people that want to make memories on the water. That's important to us to teach somebody something. You may or may not know anything about bass fishing or or, or anything, but we're going to teach you something. You're going to make those memories. So that's going well, and um, we're happy where we're at right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Lonnie, what waters are you fishing? Uh, mostly, we, we'll fish. We can fish uh, the North Fork. Well, not North Fork, but South Fork. We, uh, we do trips on the South Fork, uh, like Shenandoah. Riverton, uh, each of and Luray. We could do Lake Anna. We could do the Potomac. Uh, you know, again, it, it's about, like Jason said, you know, people that, that want to have an experience or, and it doesn't have to be bass. It could be perch. It could be crappy. You know, uh, we can do mixed species, uh, just a day, you know, going, getting out in, in the outdoors and enjoying the outdoors and all the scenery. It's great. There's something really great about, and that's one thing I've liked about this too, is just the camaraderie of fishing together too. And yeah. uh, the friends you meet, the people you go with, and, and another guest here, Doc Hethcote, and I'll never forget Doc, you know, being able to go fishing with Doc on the on the New River and the Susquehanna, but I know we did a New River trip as well, and they do a lot of traveling, so be able to jump, jump on somebody else's boat and uh, fish with them and learn from them, you know, that's really strong. I know we've had a lot of that here at Jake's just different guys that maybe didn't even know each other before this. And then, you know, we have like interest to fish and Hey, you want to go and they meet and next you end up on the water and making memories. So, yeah, and Doc Hethcote. Yeah. That's truly how I really got in smallmouth fishing was just people locally here. Let me go with them and, and learn them and, and being taught the tricks of the trade that, you know, just picking up from our, 
our community, you know, people fish with, you know. Roger Fuller told me today, just today, he talked about that. The first time he took you up to, uh, up on a Potomac, I believe, right. a trip up there and how many fish you guys caught. Like it was over a hundred, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, I've been really blessed to have, you know, great folks around here that's willing to offer their time to you know, teach folks about the area and the different fisheries we have here. It's, uh, it's just, it's, we're, we're really blessed to be able to have that in our community. Doc's catching them too. He showed me oh, some yeah. fish before we started. He's, okay. he's catching some rather big, yeah. small amount. Where, where'd you go, Doc, here recently? Well, recently, uh, Kenny Gano and I were, uh, we was up at uh, Lake Ontario fishing uh, west west side of Lake Ontario and Niagara River. We fished uh, Buffalo, uh, just around the, the, the Buffalo Wall. It's been a few days up there. It's, it's great. Uh, it's great. It's just a great place to go fish. It was, a, we had a great time. We didn't catch the numbers that we sometimes have caught, but we caught really nice quality fish. I uh, was, was real pleased with, uh, you know, the outcome. Um, water was low and water was clear. The water temperature was not really down as cool as we thought it may be, but you know, sometimes mm -hmm. you have to, you have to, yeah. when you take the time off, you, mm -hmm. you, you Deal with whatever you yeah, know, whatever you throws you know, whatever cards you're dealt with, mm -hmm. what you play. So uh, anyway, I had a great, great trip, great trip. The nice thing about all these guys too, you guys are always, and we we're talking about before we started, just uh, being able to share information. You're not afraid to, you know, share what you what you caught fish on and what's worked for you, and and just you know, really just pass on that knowledge. Right, right. That was probably given lots. You get it. So a lot of times by going out on your own and, and figuring it out, but sometimes, you know, there's somebody that's told you something that helped you and, you know, to pass that on to other people. Right. Cause the bottom line, we're here all about knowing and just really glad that Thomas started this fish in the DMV podcast. And it's a platform to be able to share information and knowledge to ultimately help people have success on the water. Cause that's what it's all about. Yes. And that's what Jason was saying yeah. earlier to make memories. And uh, it still gets, I know doc I've said before, he's like, you know, a kid at Christmas when, when I took Ray, we, Ray and I went to Susquehanna uh, yesterday, and he he was. He's, he's 71 years old, but you would have thought he was a 12-year-old getting a new bicycle at Christmas. I mean, he was so excited about it, as was I, but, you know, that's what it's all about. So uh, what we want to do now is kind of just show uh, going into the month of November, uh, what would you recommend to the viewers to uh, – what are some of your favorite boats for, for November? And then to make sure I always do the plugs and then make sure you guys hit that like button. And also again, best questions. We're going to answer everyone's questions. You have a question for any of the people that are on the board today. Best questions are going to win a gift card to Jake's bait and tackle and Chick-fil-A before we get started. Here we go. You want to start? I'll start. Jason. This time of year, uh, going into November, I would definitely look to throw a, a small Nico type type bait. I don't know if the camera can see that, but it's just a little three inch, a super Ned, something if, if the fish are a little finicky, no. and that we, we that would then. that would work in basically any body of water it would work in the south fork lake frederick lake anna uh something just to slow down a smaller presentation something slow uh it's definitely gonna get you some bites you can't forget about the jerk bait the jerk bait uh these fish are in different water columns right now and this jerk bait has been just by mega bass has been a really good jerk bait uh, for me uh catching quality fish and small fish uh pan fish you name it it's going to work a lot of people don't throw a crankbait when we get in november or it may not be in our top five but it's definitely my top five uh that crawl color that, that yeah, ball nice looking crawl. color kind of yeah. resembles the, a crayfish you know in, in a in a body of water whether it be the south fork or or wherever it may be but definitely that fall crankbait spinnerbait if you can find bait fish uh if fish are on structure rocks yeah. wood uh I'm definitely gonna have a spinner bait available uh, going out fishing. A small little. Real quick question on that before you do. You, you put a trailer on that usually, typically a spinner bait. Absolutely, all the time. I, I hold. I would. I probably would. I probably wouldn't even throw a spinner bait without a trailer. trailer. I mean, some sometimes you can go two to three inches past that hook. Mm -hmm. uh, some people throw cheater hooks on the back of their, mm -hmm. their spinner baits. I typically don't. Uh, but I always throw a trailer. There's always some type of trailer on mm -hmm. there. Just to give it that more action, mm -hmm. you can trim it closer to the skirt. You can leave it hanging over the skirt. Uh, just that vibration, you know. So that's what I do. Do you trim your skirts, uh, Jason? Uh, you know, like this time of year, cut them a little shorter? Uh, this time of year, 
probably about a half inch shorter than yeah. what they typically are. Too, 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 yeah. I think, uh, you know, what you need to key in on, like the size of the bait fish, when you, when you start throwing a spare bait, blade size is everything. Mm -hmm. You got, if you, if you're fishing clear water, you want to use like a silver, but look at your, your bait fish and try to select the spinner bait according to the size. The size. Yeah. The blade that's size. a good point. And what else, what, and that's, I like the round table too. What else, what the different styles of, uh, blades as well. Yes. What, what, yes. what's gonna, cause I'm, I'm experimenting with different. I love a spinner bait, but what do you think on, you know, Colorado versus Willow versus the, I know there's like two other. The Colorado gives you a lot of thump and, and, uh, you, what happens with your willow, willow blades, your, your, your spinner bait will rise higher in the water. As so real. you can you can wake it, but when you start throwing like Colorado or turtleback, turtleback, I like the turtleback. Uh, turtleback mm -hmm. I like better than Colorado. Why? Because it gives you the best of both worlds. You get okay. You get the the willow leaf. It's it's kind of a, a cross between a willow leaf and and a uh, Colorado. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the bump and the flash, and it, it spins faster, and it 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 won't lift as much, but it'll it'll stay more in the middle of the water column. Terrible. And on that spare bait bite, we're talking about blade stuff. But a lot of times when you get that bite, it's on the fall. Mm. It's when you make that long cast and it's fluttering down in five, six foot, and bam, that's when they hit. Interesting. That's when I that's when I get we my talked about that. Yeah. Remember the big yep. fish, man. When it hits first time, they're on it right now. Yeah. Now is that turtle back? Is that the Indiana blade? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Same right. yep. yeah. You see, it looks like a turtle yeah. shell. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, those are those the best blades I like to yeah. And it, then does it matter color? Like I know sometimes they'll do uh, two different colors. You know, I mean, I guess it's yeah, gold and silver yeah. or, or color blue. Yeah. And for smallmouth on that blade, speaking of that, the, that red having a little red yep. uh, mm -hmm. spinner up front is sometimes mm -hmm. golden. You know, that getting the right, pattern. yeah, yep. I'm getting the right condition. It's hard to beat a good spinnerbait bite, Jason. Yes, it is. I it's love spinnerbait. I hit hard. that thing. Uh, the small quarter ounce high tech jig. Uh, it's a good finesse bait uh, if the fish are being finicky and, and they're not reacting. I, I didn't pick five. And then we so. do, and before we go to the next bait, we do have a good question from from Philip Liggins. From smaller profile baits, how important is the width? The width of a bait. How important is the width, do you guys think? It, it's, it's, it's all about silhouette for the most part. So, you know, when you, when you look, obviously, when you're, if you're fishing a spinner bait, to match bait fish you you want to be as narrow as possible you know but again if the water's muddy you want a, a bigger profile so you'll get something you put a like a bigger trailer on it mm -hmm. you they, want more thump more yes. vibration mm -hmm. yeah. obviously clear water they can see really really good mm -hmm. so you, you want to be as close to try to match the hatch possible mm -hmm. you were talking about that jig too though i like that i use that same jig um and that weight you can feel it right a tungsten, right? That's a yes, tungsten weight, tungsten. and you can feel everything with oh, that. Yeah. If you've never thrown tungsten before, you need to do yourself a favor. I know it's more expensive, yeah. but you can feel everything on the bottom. Yeah. And moving like in <laughs> December, a jig like yes. that type of quarter ounce with a hair jig, mm -hmm. maybe a panther, that that would be mm -hmm. that would be money too. Mm -hmm. And I didn't pick five; I picked six. If uh, if there's some bait fish around and you see some some activity on top, and, and fish are feeding on them, I I'm definitely going to have a walking tight bait uh, available mm -hmm. to throw. Mm -hmm. to maybe catch some of those fish. I'm surprised you didn't go get a Uzuri. Well, I look for it. I couldn't find it. It's a Uzuri, <laughs> man. It's, right got a, it's a Uzuri pencil pop. Okay. I fished with him. That's the first thing coming out. It could it could be ice on the water. And he's Not still. right. <laughs> but I tell you, it's a little heavy. And I've used it a lot the last couple of weeks in my shoulders. So you need to get that workout in. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely a type of walking tight bait. <laughs> And then we have another question here for our fantastic panel from Beaver Hall. Also, huge shout out, uh, boss, for finishing second place yesterday at the Butch Ward tournament. Um, you think this is a weird ass angle to read that at? Hold on. <laughs> you think I might be crazy, but I've won tournaments in forty dog, forty forty degree. That's why he's here. Forty degree water temps on a nail weighted fluke. Right Let it go. die to the bottom. Is that that um? That's the, the hover stride, the whatever. Is that the same thing? No, it's like this, and then you 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 uh you put a nail in the head of it, and that thing it'll it'll when you uh you do it in the river because when the water starts getting really really cold, that a lot of bait fish die, and they'll you know they do like that, mm -hmm. and they'll just 
when you put a nail in it, it just speeds it up. Mm. And it, it gets sort of, and you can fish deeper water with the nail. Yeah. yeah. The other thing about the fluke, too, like you can fish it in all levels of the water column. You can even bring, like you were saying earlier, bring that thing to the top, let it twitch oh, on yeah, the absolutely. top, and yep. or let it get down deep, and or do nothing, and it still works. And mm -hmm. then spruce up the, the tail a little bit with a little chartreuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good there money. You Good money. Absolutely. Who wants to go next? Go ahead, Doc. Well, all right. I'll just uh, kind of get to speaking of the spinner bait. Uh, if, if we could get some, if we could get some rain and some water in the rivers, uh, especially if we get some good color to the river uh, and even muddy, uh, don't forget your uh, your your spinner bait, chartreuse for smallmouth is is awesome, and uh, you know the bigger profile uh, spinner bait like that. I think tends to work better if you're in, in muddy or dirt, yeah, real dirty water. I've had dynamite you know, color. That's a good. That's a great color. That's a, you know, good, if you get if you get some stain or some muddy water, that yeah, that's definitely got plenty of flash. Yeah, that'll, that'll get you. And then, um, you know, thinking about this time of year, you got thinking your bait fishers. You know, basically, you're gonna have two uh, two schools of thought there. You're gonna have your small your your small bait fish, and then you're gonna have your large bait fish. So, you know, you either go small or go large and of course the mega bass here they got the 4.2 and you can actually even you know use something larger the five five you know five and a half inch uh, if you're on the right water or you can use you know the little uh three inch like has dong shad uh you know, this is 4.2 has dong shad and uh you know you you can use those singly uh single basically either on a, a small jig head depending on water the depth you're you're fishing and of course the the, the bait fish you're, you're fishing around, but uh, and, but don't forget umbrella rig, umbrella rig. It's uh, you know you got your basically this is going to be the time when the water temperatures between you know 55 and, and uh, 60 degrees uh, right in there. You know you're going to be the umbrella rig. Uh, so Doc Brian Brown just sent me a picture. He was out Sunday up at Lake Holiday. And he's only thrown the mob junior. He th it's the first time he's ever thrown a third cast. He thought he had a monster on. He had a two pound uh, small mouth and another two pound large mouth on the same cast. One cast, two different, yeah. took and same I, time fighting over it. This is going to be the time time of year, you know, that this is going to come into play because you're going to have, you know, your bait balls and mm -hmm. fish will be that. That's that can that can do the trick. Uh, and then as it gets obviously gets colder, your water gets down closer to 50. And in the 40s, you you come off the umbrella rig and go to more of a, a jig head, single, mm -hmm. single, uh, you know, uh, minnow. But, uh, and then, of course, the gulp, you know, the gulp here is just the finesse. You know, it's, it's hard to beat something like a gulp, when, especially in the finesse when you're finessing. Um, Rogers jigs. Uh, this is a really finesse. Uh, it's a small jig at Rogers. It's got uh, this is one. It's got this kind of blue tint to it. And as Jared was showing me a little earlier, fish he caught or crawdad he caught up at Susquehanna. It actually had that blue tint. Mm -hmm. There's a there's actually a tube uh, called North Branch tube. Yeah, it's got, got that very very blue. Yeah. That's, that's a blue green hue. Like that, yep. that crawl you know yep. crawl, crawl, crawfish that you had. And uh, so that's. Uh, that's a uh, Rogers got some good jigs, and of course I'm still using the old uh, scrounger head. That's just you know that's just to me uh, just a go-to bait because of the action, and you know it's it's uh, especially this time of year with the bait fish moving like they are. That's that uh, that's, that's a money bait. Yeah, I, I tell you, wasn't it Aaron Martin's one that uh, brought yes. that out? Yes, yeah, that, that thing of, that that bait. If, if you got to have one bait, that right there. That does because you trick. can put a lot of different things on, on it. Exactly, you can, right. you can fish it so many different yes, ways. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I mean, you can jig it. You can swim it. Right. I mean, you can let it fall to the bottom. Mm -hmm. you can keep it on top. I mean, it's the vibration is really tight too. It's that's a good question. I, I got this question is going to win something for me because I was on Big Slack yesterday fishing the Butch Ward tournament, and uh, this is a great question because this was an issue. Uh, Big Might Fishing Chronicles. Have a question. What do you guys throw when you have all the leaves on the water? That was a huge problem okay. for a huge section of my river. I can answer that if you want. <laughs> so when it gets to that point, uh, if you take like when when it's a, a bluebird skies, 
if you get like where the leaves are piled up like that, those bass, will, those fish, they get under for shale, yeah. you know, because the eyelid, bass don't have eyelids. So, you know, when you're fishing something like that, obviously anything with trebles is going to, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but like that scrounger head he just showed, you can actually fish that. And you, you, of course, the leaves are going to be through the whole water system, top, mm -hmm. middle, and bottom, you know, but. But uh, when it gets like that, I usually try to focus on bottom baits like nets, mm -hmm. uh, jigs, you know, mm -hmm. something heavy mm -hmm. that'll push through the leaves and get to the get bottom. The bottom. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, when you're fishing heavy leaves, like I, don't worry about so much where your line's going into the water. As long as your bait's below the leaves, mm -hmm. you're fine. Don't worry about what's going on, on top, right? Just mm -hmm. that feel of your bait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You it want... is a time of year, too, where yeah. like even that, I've, I don't know how many hook sets I've set on a leaf. Because it does, you can feel that too, oh, yeah. and you you think it's you know you actually watch the leaf. Yeah, it'll if you get a bite or a hit or whatever, that leaf that leaf will move. Mm -hmm. So you know the biggest thing is you just have to focus on using baits for the bottom. Mm -hmm. right. Single hook. Yeah. So, yeah. Another question or two. Justin Rush says, "Where's Jason's for Jason Ford's costume?" But you said earlier you're. Yeah. I'm a West Virginia coach, so coach. got my apparel on. <laughs> I mean, wrestling uh, coach, yeah. basketball coach, he's football, football coach. Football. I mean, I'm dressing up for uh, prior Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Chris Kringle. Yeah, I'm working on it. And we got, we got. Uh, I'm gonna just start. All right, so I'm going to start giving away some gift cards here. We're going to go, David Williams, you just won a $5 gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle for the two-parter. I think this is a good one. So we're going to do both questions first, and then we can get the answers from our panel. Uh, part one is, is there a certain condition, whether it be watercolor or sky, when the painted blades work best? And then the follow-up is, also, when do, blade, when do blade baits come into play? Blade baits usually come into play when the water temperature gets below 50 uh 50 and down all the way down to freeze out yep yeah. and those blade baits work excuse me uh <coughs> all what was, the, way through what was the first question but oh, the, first, the first question was when do painted when when do uh painted blades on a spinner bait play and then blade baits do you throw them and when do you like to throw them uh spinner baits painted blades i i rarely will throw them unless it, i got a good heavy stain on the water now these guys might be different when if that water's you know fairly clear i'll, I'll stick to the, the silver blades uh maybe uh silver with a, a gold uh I, a lot of people uh what's coming now is the copper i've been throwing more mm -hmm. copper copper yeah. copper you know yeah. the fish don't see a lot of that, yeah you know? yep. and it, it, uh the copper's really starting to turn on pretty good but for painted blades you see i'll fish it's got to be pretty heavy stain a nice little plug for chris kendrick um when i did the uh smallie video hidden gems with travis eden i got copper spin tail blades for from him so i could actually put that into my ned rig every now and then to put to get a little flash but you can still get copper if you get custom uh sometimes on the painted blades you know of course you have the colors just like we showed them in ago, like chartreuse or whatever but they y'all have seen the, the blades where it actually looks like a, a painted up like a yeah. mena yeah, you know what yes. I'm talking about. Yeah. Now that, of course, when the fish are, you know, when the <laughs> minnows are, you know, schooled up and this and that, that kind of blade would work. Yeah, you, you know, can use them right along with the silver. Yeah, and the exactly. Yeah. And then you have the hammer too. You have the hammer yes. texture mm -hmm. too. That well, that's been common. The spoon. Right. I had a guy looking for one of those. They have a spoon too. But yes. that's also another. And there's so much out there. Um, I bought a couple of them. Those textured mm -hmm. spinner baits, and I've been using one mm -hmm. uh, for canine. You know, one one thing about spinner bait, you know, you try the the the, the gold or the silver mm -hmm. or the you know the the copper. If it's not working, you you know, stop. never never hurts to try one with the painted blade. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. If you're not, yeah. you know, if you know you're fishing in grass or the edge of grass yeah. where there should be fish, something ain't working. Go to go to one off the you know some some different. Just try. It. And another thing too, I was thinking earlier when you talking about spinner bait, that is another one where if you let it get down in the water column, let that thing don't don't always start it right away. Let that yeah, almost, let, let it sink to the bottom, and then slow roll. Yep. Just get the keep the blades turning. Don't I mean you again different times of year. Try different speeds. How uh, you talk about water column? I always talk about working all three levels of water yes. column with different speeds too. Maybe before you change out because a slow roll, especially the Colorado blade, down deep sometimes, right. especially in the summertime. 
yeah. maybe not so much now, but you gotta think this is crazy. But about uh, 20, 20 couple years ago, I was throwing sparing baits on Anna that were an ounce, oh, and yeah. the blades were like that. And I was throwing them in 20 to 25 feet away, mm-hmm. catching that. Yep. 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 They were huge. I still got them, actually. So let it sing. I mean, a lot of times, too, we, we get out there and we want to get, get on it. Sometimes being patient and just letting, like you said, fluttering down, too. And I I love the story of the guy, two four pounders in a tournament yeah. on the Susky. He's watching and those bad, it's bass is trailing back. He didn't know what to do. He was getting close to the boat and he just killed it. The right. thing fluttered yeah. down and they they went down and looked at it. And They'll then pick it, off, pick the it off the bottom. It, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So change it up a little bit. We, we, got we got two more. We got two more. Go ahead. I'll just, I'll just these All right. So the baits that I pick, basically, you know, I, I, there's a lot of guys around here that fish the North Fork. Well, probably way too North Fork now, but uh, and the South Fork. So my bait selection is based around November on the South and North Fork. Uh, these baits are going to catch them. Uh, this, you know, Roger's jigs. I've been using his jigs for years. He makes a hair jig, and when you start getting in November, when the water temperature gets 50 and, and below, the hair jigs are by far the best bait that you could use, and it, it'll work all the way through the spring. Uh, you just put like a small, like a Berkeley, like real tiny Berkeley power bait, small trailer on there, and uh, they, they were absolutely, I don't know whether it's just because the hair undulates or kind of just like moves with the water better than silicone skirts but uh the hair jigs are phenomenal bass catchers uh another one i like to, to is the net everybody using net heads but uh this uh z-man uh, trd tubes you can put them on a net head and uh this canada crawl collar phenomenal this this is probably one of the best baits i've used even on the susquehanna wow yeah that's it that that works really really well uh and then you know like I, when i fish it i'm usually try to determine if they're eating small baits you mm-hmm. know like small crawls and i've noticed over the years you know in the winter time they they take really really small st- and i think a lot of it's because of the, the bugs because it, underwater you know you've got your mm-hmm your your larvas and stuff that are pretty small so they're taking stuff like mm-hmm. that uh and then of course <clears throat> you never want to go on the north south fork without two big tubes and the the best color i've ever used is purple and green pumpkin purple plate green pumpkin I like a little purple and yeah yep. i don't know why the purple what 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 it does but the purple and green pumpkin is probably the best color i've ever used well, i tell you purple one thing it didn't i'm always try to pay attention to details but i noticed one time a small mouth when i was looking and it was a picture but if you turned it a certain way there was a purple hue now oh, depending yeah. on where it is i mean either black or green there's a lot of different color patterns but sometimes you turn that fish a certain way there's a, a purple hue yeah. that and of course crappy same way crappy can have some purple in them yes. and bluegill i mean they're yeah. all multi well e- even even the small bay fish in the river have a purple mm-hmm. hue in them, mm-hmm. you know? uh so again you know this time of year in November, you, the crawl pattern is really big. Like Jason was talking about, you can go to Anna, Potomac. Of course, the crawl is a little different color, Potomac. But you, you know, the David Fritz side, this is good, good crank bait. Good crank bait. Yeah, yeah, that color uh, works really, really well. And I always, yeah. you know, square wheel. Uh, most of the rivers are shallow, but you, you, uh, especially like Norfolk's really shallow. So when you get in them little pools, you get something that'll dive four to six feet, they'll just annihilate it, you know. And uh, crankbaits are another thing that you could talk for days on. You could have a yeah. class between square bills, okay. right, or depth of it, height rattles, longer right. running wobbles, yeah. and then silent. silent or, I mean, it's yeah. you could, and colors on that. like. And, and, and the thing, you know, the colder the water gets, the more – you, you, you want to take that wide wobble and most people don't know but the, the, the fatter the crankbait the more the wobble and they talk about flat side crankbaits and in the winter time you want something that that's not as aggressive right. you want it tight so a flat side works really really well in, in colder water and then my last is like the guy was saying a while ago is the flute you can't go wrong 
no matter where you fish. Right. This Maybe is always years. yeah. And there's different colors, you know. I <clears> fish <throat> white, and I fish like uh, a olive shad, you know, some with a little dark back, light bottom. Baby bass. Yeah, yeah, anything like that. But uh, those for North and South Fork, you can't go wrong with any of those baits. You're gonna catch fish. Lonnie, in reference to the hair jig, what I say, you know, as as we get in late November, temperature. I don't know what the temperature on the uh, uh, Shannon door is running. It's now, in, well, this past week it's probably shot up over sixty, yeah. but it was at the high fifties. Yeah. 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 Once it gets down there around fifty, and you start you fishing the hair jig more, is there say you know how it's a lot of times it's clear water? Is there a certain color hair jig you usually start with? I know you know it's. The I thing always, you always can, I always start with like a brown and an olive. Do you? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, sometimes I'll I'll use one with a little orange in it just to see uh -huh. if it'll make a difference. But most of the time it's like an olive and a brown. Right. Now if I get into like deeper holes where it's like 15, 20 feet, then I'll go to uh black. Okay. Like a black and yeah. a blue. But I'll mix it up. I'll use like a black and a blue hair jig with a green pumpkin trailer crawl trailer. Oh okay. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just gives it just a little bit different yeah. look. You always use a trailer on your hair jig? Yes, absolutely, 150%. Okay. Unless, you know, now there's some hair jigs that are made that are made out of rabbit fur. Mm -hmm. They're called zonker, zonker oh, hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No fly fish mouth. That's so, right. uh, and those, they, they have a trailer on. They, you know, they have a long tail. Oh, okay. Something yeah. like that, I won't do it. Right. Yeah. You, uh, the trailer, I guess, you know, of course, I, what I usually try to use is one of the, you know, not one of the real, fluttering yeah you don't you want know, a lot of action that venom makes a nice little yes. like uh, yes. you know trailer that i find it the works. colder the water gets the less action you want you want yeah. to, and you're going to fish a lot slower you know like but when as the water warms you know they'll get more right. active but early in the mornings or and when that water's like in the 40s that you just want that thing just early right. right and the, the biggest thing too is when you're getting colder temperatures move your bait slow yes when you're mm -hmm. kind of slow down just slow down mm -hmm. uh, when you think you're going slow slow down some more right yeah i've slow. caught some of my biggest small mouths and and on the shenandoah and in, in the dead of the winter using actually one of those little uh gulp flukes black yeah. gulp fluke on a little small. jig head just basically cast yeah. out there well, yeah, and do hardly it, anything mm -hmm. with it they think it's mad uh, you know it's that little yeah yeah mm -hmm, right on the bottom yeah. that that blade bait, when it gets below 50, I'm throwing a blade bait. And I like the Tamiki bolts. Mm -hmm. But those things, I've even been on Anna. I've caught some good bass. And yeah. you would, you'd be surprised. Those little, little hooks. But they they catch some good ones. Smallmouth too. Yeah. So we have, um, Carl, if you get back to the camera. So we have uh, 22 questions. And at one point, we had over 60 people watching right now. So, yeah. Say thanks it. all of you guys for watching. Some these episodes are getting so, you know, really highly uh, is we'll oh wow you zoomed in real quick god damn it's like an airplane <laughs> crashing into the side of a mountain uh, i mean that's Brian henry this will that's, actually be beverly hillbilly not yeah so we'll, 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 we'll go this one so brian uh brian henry said is this an episode of is that oh he haul he haul yeah. of, of yeah, he haul that's right um so we're gonna blast through my baits real quick and then what we're going to do guys just for exeter time i'm going to do a patreon only live stream tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about in depth of the tournament stuff uh for tomorrow just in case we don't get to it tonight so some of the baits that i have for november and i'm going to attack this more of a lakefront i think you're really getting into swim bait season and to me swim bait season really cuts into two parts which is underspins and then just pure swim baits. And this is what I want to do. This is a tackle tip I have for you guys. If you're not wanting to commit to an underspin, get yourself your favorite jig head you have. And then now you don't have to special order these as much, but get screw lock blades. You can keep them in your pocket. And then if you feel like you need to add a little bit of a blade, you can screw it right into your swim bait. And then boom, you just multitask there versus going with something like this. Yeah, works good on a Cinco too. Yes, um, I also put this sometimes on a Ned rig as well, a lighter Ned rig to give it some flash, so you can just lift it right up and over some of those ledges. But either either one of these will work fine. Um, I personally will have I'll have this in the boat, and then I'll keep this in my pocket anytime I fish a swim bait. If I feel like I'm not getting bit, I'll put this on real quick. And if I feel like the bites actually go up, then I'll think about tying a, a, a an underspin on as well. Um, that's the number one thing when I'm fishing like a lake in or something like that. I'm going to get into the swim bait bite. Umbrella rigs start playing for me really in December is really when I'll get into umbrella rigs. So I'm going to tie that over for the December edition. The other one is the flashy swim. This is a three 
or a four aught is fantastic for the title Potomac to give it a little bit more flash. No one for some reason, title fishermen are so set in their ways that there's like six baits that they'll throw and that's it. And it's crazy that the guy that won the two day super BFL, he won it on a fluke because everyone was fishing a frog. And he's like, well, if I throw a fluke, it's going to sink into the holes. And those fish have never seen that before. Right. He's probably fishing yeah. a I know. Yeah. He's fishing. Yeah. Fishing a weightless. Yeah. Fish no. But it's just it's little differences, but they're so set in their ways. You put flash on that swim bait, you're gonna get a couple extra bites. Um, if I throw a jerk bait, I have a spy bait tied on. I really feel like anytime catch it, anytime the jerk bait bite dies, go to a spy bait or something like that. Uh Carly, you should like the spy bait very well since this is what you caught your game winning fish on. Uh, I, I describe this to her it's a swim bait with treble hooks. You cast it out and you slowly reel it back in. Um that and then of course as always if you're fishing smallmouth you have to have gulp this is one of the best damiki style baits possible one thing i would suggest with this is you have to put a dab of super glue on it to keep it on it is so mushy no matter what hook stop you have on there it will come undone everyone has seen gulp y'all know what it looks like <laughs> i'm gonna check that take um, off your hook before you put it yeah away that's the, you better well hard, believe it yeah, yeah that, hard, that yeah. you will ruin your hook um super glue amazing you always have it on you you know he's talking about the screw in uh blades uh rapid fishing solutions makes uh rapid fishing good, solutions. you know some uh some good blades just to carry in your tackle box you know real easy real small real perfect for ned or just like thomas was talking about and sometimes there's slight little changes like adding that flash it's that's all you need to do mm -hmm. so those little changes can yeah, then you go start tricking some shots. And it's something where you don't have to cut and retie. You just right. keep it in your pocket, right. throw it on real exactly. quick, and then and then see if it works. Um, we're getting into jig season here. I, I think if you can get a custom jig, and after talking to so many people on the show, if you can get a custom jig tied for your specific bodies of water, that will 100% be the best option. So if you're going with a custom jig, I literally just had a custom jig. The one you all just talked about. So, right yeah. Here. Is it right there? Thank you. I'm like, my losing my mind. Rogers is, you, I think we already showed the Rogers, I believe. So. Yeah, Rogers Jigs, that's another good one for local Shenandoah. If you had to pick a generic type, I like the the Dirty Jigs um, archaic style head. I feel like that head size gets through stuff pretty well. But also the Headbanger from Ike, that one gets through stuff too. So if you're fishing between 20, 15 feet of water, offshore brush, Smith Mountain Lake, Lake Anna, I like those two style heads for that. Um, I don't have one on me now, but the reason I like the archaic style head like Dirty Jigs has is you can also swim it too pretty efficiently. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to just drag it. Um, I like multi-tool baits where I can do a couple of things with it, which is why, you know, that head style is so perfect. Mm -hmm. You can throw it different places. You can swim and, it, yep. drag it, pop it. Yeah. Anything with it. And yep. the problem with the swim head jigs now is like they're so narrow, you can't do anything but swim it. Right. And it's annoying because yeah. I used to get some bites where after you're dragging it, you just rip it off the bottom right. and start swimming it. Yeah. And it works really good. Um, the other thing that I did have a lot of success with in this last tournament at Big Slack, only thing I could get them to bite on was a drop shot for some reason and a Carolina rig. Um, I got the Carolina rig in practice. It didn't work as well in the tournament, but I'm going to go through both setups. Drop shot wise, it was a Kai Tech. It was the easy two shiner. And then it was also basically smallmouth crack, which was the Maxent flatworm. Please don't take out the... <laughs> yeah, that Berkeley Max Cent crawl, that little tiny one. On oh, the jig, I think. they're they're so money. You need a bunch of them though, yeah. because they do yeah, not you, last you, long. Yeah, you better buy us there. We got into a school of Google eyes. So big slack. There's a section where it's between 15 to 20 feet of water, and we're basically fishing just the riffles, like it would be if it was like 10, 10, 10 inches. And we kept getting bites, and they kept tearing them off. And it turned out to be the biggest school of Google eyes possible. So get a bunch of them is is the point of that. The Carolina rig, this is what I do with the Carolina rig. Um, two types of weights, Lindsay no snag, or I'm so glad you guys started to have this here, is a snake weight. Oh, I got both of them. Yeah, both of these are also, spoiled. this will work on a drop shot too if it's super snaggy. Because uh, I was talking to Ken. Ken, thank you for being my boat partner. I hate tungsten for drop shot because you're going to spend $100,000 that you're going to lose every other day when you break off your drop shot. Get the cheapest lead possible so you're not crying. I just don't think on a drop shot, if you had to pick, I think it's great for a shaky head, things where you have bottom contact, but because it goes hook, then lead, I don't know how much the bottom sensitivity helps compared to how much you're going to snag and lose it if it's $5 a pop. 
So these are really good for being not super snaggy. Putting this, and I'll go with a, I'll go with the lighter version. This is a half ounce. I'll go lighter to a one eighth. Same thing with this snake weight, and I'll go with a spinning reel setup so I can get max cast distance and a short leader. And you can drag a small bait and just give them a different look, but you'll get through most of your riffles with this. Um, and then again, just don't cast like straight up current. Maybe cast at a little bit of an angle with that uh, if you want to toss that to her. You know, reference to that weight there. They they also make a lead a little lead banana weight that you know it's it's relatively cheap. Oh and yeah, it works, and it works actually really good. If and you know. I will. I'll put a picture of that too in the episode yeah. description as well. And I think that's pretty much, oh, and then uh, one ot Gamagatsu or Berkeley. Uh, sometimes I go with a two ot for the drop shot hook. Pretty simple. One thing I want to ask all of you guys, what is your idea for the best leader knot? So I was a diehard FG guy. I mm -hmm. use a double unit. And then I had a guy on the boat yesterday, Kenny, thanks for uh, telling me this, that the FG will actually the amount of work you do to put the FG into your leader material, if the leader is too light, it actually damages the line. Yeah. And so, will. and I just, that clicked in my mind, like that might be an issue I have with my well, FG. And, and the more, the more you wrap line like that, and once you start cinching it, even, even, you know, you, you, you should spit on it or get it wet or whatever. You put your mouth, you can feel it heating up. And that mm. takes, that takes the strength out of that knot. Mm -hmm. so that's the biggest thing the more wraps you make just understand that's the more contact line that's going to be your cinching up i mean you know i do a double union i do seven to eight wraps that's it yeah. Yeah. and i can i mean it, it works phenomenal but the fg knot it's a good knot yeah but you just got to be careful you know make sure that you don't oh. you don't stress it mm -hmm. I like the FG knot due to the fact that you know I can I can tie that thing. And it's you can't hardly separate it from the line. I mean it's yes, it's, it's one yeah. good. It's an extra. Yeah. I mean you know in reference right. to that. I mean uh, and basically I mean it's it's worked for me. I used to use a double uni, but it's I I can get yeah you know, it's a little more bumpy. My eyes casting. got bad, so it the less I have to wrap and tie, the, I know, the faster yeah. I can get it done. Yeah. I love the FG still though for my my swim um, bait rod. I'll go braid to a fluorocarbon for my bigger swim baits, and what I like is on the bait caster, it goes straight onto the spool w without a problem. But when I got down to six and four pound test, I really started to be conscious now of if I'm too aggressive when i'm right. tying that fg yes. yeah. I'm, I'm going to have a problem what, yeah. what you got to do with that fg if you're using that light line you got to do a lot more wraps i mean you got to do yes you know you got to do 25 or 30 i'm i'm serious because it when you're using if you're using eight pound to 10 pound uh eight pound fluoro or something like that to 10 pound braid it's really you don't have to do as many wraps but you get down that four pound test if you don't if you don't really do the extra wraps you'll you'll pull it right out you know, it'll happen. With that lighter line, you could yeah. slip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to just do a lot more slip. wraps, but it'll hold. I mean, that's what I tell you when I was this past week fishing uh, up up north, uh, I was using four pound test on eight pound test uh, uh, braid. Catching five pounds. And I was now. catching, you know, five pounds small. Wow. I was never had you a break. You can do off. it, you know, as long, as long as you don't have a lot of uh, wood or, or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, up in Susquehanna. The rocks is your biggest enemy. Oh, yeah. You know, it, I mean, it, as long as you check your line, I mean, you can catch them on four pound test. And that reminds me, too. Make mm -hmm. sure jigs or whatever you're using, make sure you every so often check it, check too. There's yes. nothing. Oh, you got to check that and the thing breaks. I'm like, better there Change than on a bass and then retie and just get in the habit of retying. And also feeling up your line because I did that, too, and I felt it. And I went and sure enough, so cutting up that line because, like you said, yes. there's rocks and the smallies are taking across those rocks. So are you but, getting yeah. the shell beds and, you know, you they, know hang up? It's easy to forget. It's a phrase if it's resistant to a to a extent you know but still you always want to at least like a foot or two mm -hmm. up just like you said mm -hmm. and then what i started to figure out and i could be completely off with this and then don't worry guys i see i know we got like ten thousand questions we're gonna get to them here the size of your leader is so important because of the stretch the more stretch you have even in fluorocarbon the less it's going to damage your knot versus if you have six inches of leader right. and then you set the hook and so what I started to do with my drop shot setup, because I, and you guys know, and you guys are going to know this on the Patreon stream, I broke off a big one because I was drop shotting on four pound test because I kept cutting down and my brain is like, I probably should retie a new leader, but I thought I could get one more out of it. I like 10 to 15 feet of leader. So when I cast and if I set the hook too hard, I have that extra cushion. Right. Like it's almost better to have a little too much leader than not enough. 
I don't think I ever knew, used less than six foot, six, six or seven foot, foot a liter. That's big. Like huh? when, when it's uh like like right now the river's really clear. I went up to ten feet. Oh wow! Man. Yeah, because I use braid on all my spinning rods. Yeah, and it's braid to floral. So, you know, in the river, I mean, the the water's so clear and it's low, so they 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 see it. You know, they oh, see yeah. it really well. So I've gone to ten as much as ten feet. And it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I usually I always use at least ten feet. I'll okay. go up even more at times. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you break keep you know you break off too if you do break well, off. You know, you're not I, don't, there. I don't use the like six feet because it never gets more than six feet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, if you get snagged and you pull off, if you have that much, you can get the yeah. leader into your reel yes. before you break. Right. Which I feel like yes, you're gonna get exactly. so much of your leader back if you can get that's, that. That's that's important too to be able to get it mm -hmm. just a turn or two into your reel. That makes a difference. I mean, I know a lot of people talk about 16, 18 inches, but I'm a big extra. I use that long leader. What's your all favorite leader material? Actually, I don't think uh, we talk about that. I, I I really like the Seagull. I I use Seagull. That, that just it just worked and i've used uh berkeley and all of it but and the red label i like the red label red yeah label red cigar. label's really yeah. good yeah. but i use cigar most of the time cigar yep yep red label cigar who's that cigar. fc fc uh, uh leader yeah, leader sniper. line have you ever yeah, used sniper. that sniper sniper, yeah, sniper yeah. line mm -hmm. i use i use sniper i use sniper yeah. sunlight they came out with a new product that i'm gonna try here hopefully yeah, sniper line. it's yeah. from it's it was i, I cast this year from uh Australia? Uh, it's from Sunline, but it's mm. um they took the fly fishing they took the fly fishing thought process where it starts at like 15 pound test yes. and it tapers down, down to eight. Oh. oh wow. And I think that I don't know if it's out yet or not, but as yeah, soon as it is, out. I'm gonna try it. Okay, it's out. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna try that because that's it, what's it called? It's tapered. It's actually see fly fishing uh years ago early, early fly fishing, they they made their own leaders and they would tie a notch, you know. So you would your first leader would be like 10 pounds. Then the next section right. of it would be eight. And it, they would, that's how, because it had to be tapered. So now they've actually came out with tapered leader that you can buy that you no, tie to. No knots, just straight. Yeah, tapered it's water. tapered down Tepa, to Tepa. whatever test you taper, want. Taper, Tepa, taper. I'm going to speak yeah. words, ladies and gentlemen. Tepa, tapa face leader, the FC leader. The only thing I could see about that is how you know how much it's going to cost and, and you know right. see how see because obviously if you break off as you break off yes it's, thicker, it's going to get thicker yeah. Yeah. eventually you have to change it out you're see yeah. now, like seeing fly fishing they have a tapered leader and then you put the little uh section onto that yeah. so that's the only thing that breaks mm -hmm. right? mm. Oh, okay. Tip so, it's, so, so it's yeah. fly line to leader to tip it to tip. It. But it's yeah. so it's two leader knots you have to tie that. Yes. 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 You, you. Yeah. One two. Oh, two. Okay. Two. Yeah. two. You tie one to your fly line, which now they got the loop knot thing connector. But and That's then when, yeah. when your leader, if your leader's nine foot, you always put like one two foot of uh, tip it on. So that's what you tie your lure to, your fly. The tippet line. Yes, the tippet. Especially and if you're talking about, like, when you're talking about a brook trout in that, the native trout in that stream, that's, and you're talking about crystal clear, and yes. they're going to, they, so that's even, I mean, you're really, now you could still use, like, if you're doing stock trout or something, and it's yes. a stream I've, and a good fast moving, you could just use regular, I've you used know, two pound test yeah. tippet. Right. On a leader, yeah. Have y'all ever heard that, like, if you look at this leader, the actual, product the leader line product versus just using like say for and i'm a big cigar fan as well but just like using eight pound cigar versus like a a designated leader line have you heard about the temps the, the actual tensile strength being better on uh, uh, on the the line that's supposed to be designed for the leader that's a good no, question because right? i'll just use regular i've never heard of line. it but yeah. i I've, I've, I've used been... i've used leader line uh -huh. and i've and I've used regular line and I've really not never ever know. Yeah. yeah. I, I just wondered, I've, I've heard, I heard, I've heard that that's, it's really never made a difference, but I've heard that, you know, that that's kind of part of the design of why they come out with the and designated leader. And they've been doing that. They do it on the, yeah, for ocean. Fish. So it looks like it's $10 for two 10 foot leaders. So it's $10 for two 10 foot leaders. Is what they're selling for. So that's I don't. probably about right. You know, Fly leaders, they're, they're usually yeah. run between three and three and five bucks a piece. Yeah. But, 
It kind of ties into this interesting question from R. Mark Parson. Uh, congratulations, you just won a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Um, $5 gift card. Again, as always, guys, with gift cards, I'll get them out to you this week. Just email me uh, at fishingdmedia at gmail.com, Instagram, or Facebook. The question is, can you really tell the difference between a cigar floor leader and regular red label used as a leader? I, you know, again, the brands, they, they all have their own way. They make their, their fluorocarbon. I don't know if you can tell a difference, but I do know that, you know, there's some brands of fluorocarbon that when it gets cold, they get really, really stiff, you know, mm. and some are, are more uh, limber. And uh, I, I don't know, you know, I guess it's just what they, the resins they use. I th and I think I think like all the baits in this shop, I think it's personal preference. I mean, your trialing, your strand, like it's old school. But there's I know guys, I know Buka with the swim baits uses trialing, like in mono. Like it's not. I mean, I think yeah, it's, it's engineered differently. There's things, certain things that are that get advantages. I think when it really comes down to, it, and I've tried all the different lines, and I'm not an expert by that. any means, but I'm telling you, you can go out and catch good fish with with a strand or trialing now, but the that's that's a great question. Can you tell the difference? And I think what you're saying, either memory or just how it feels too, because yes. you can and yeah. you can tell. Or like even when we throw lures on there, you can just, ah, no, I'm not, a, you know, feel. doesn't feel right or you know. So yeah. and that's just it's a great so question. It comes back to preference too. Right. Personal right. preference. How, how is it? How's it reacting? Yes. How's, you know, how's the casting? How do you feel when your hook set? Yep. You got flex in your line. I mean, yep. It's all those things. How's your bait? How's your bait traveling? Right. Well, you know, on that line. And if you look at line. The diameter. A lot of these companies are yeah, able to take the same pound test mm -hmm. in center diameter. Right. So again, yes. it will react it. Same tensile strength. Like yeah. we said before, you're I mean, case in point, six five, six pound smallmouth on and same you're talking about golf, you know, four pound, I've seen four pound test, big striper. And so again, mm -hmm. drag set right. I mean it's oh yeah, it's as long as it's yes. not gonna get you could probably do that yourself, but if if you know right. And it's all about drag and yeah. you know and, and working fighting the fish. And drag you know, I mean pressure. there's some I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, well, uh buddy mine, Jeff Miller, yeah. Jeff Wolford, Floyd. Yeah. They use just pure old mono. Mono, you know, I'm telling you. Eight pound you test on eight pound test yeah. or eight eight or six pound mm -hmm. test on spinning reel, twelve pound test mono. or ten pound what on bait caster. So, and man, they catch the slew of fish. I mean, yeah. it's all what you kind of all personal like, preference, what you you're know, confident in. Mono's come a long way. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the eighties, mono filament. You used that stuff, and if you put it on a spinner rod and you cast it, half the spool was coming off at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my problem, but, you know, it's a lot better. With, with mono, uh, I think I kind of got spoiled with the uh, the sensitivity. It seems like with the braid, you know, uh, mm -hmm. versus and and the stretch. Of course, with the mono, you, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and you know, once again, some people it don't matter. Well, they catch the slew. They use mm -hmm. mono. They don't. My opinion: everyone has a place. That's yeah. right. Mono, braid, mm -hmm. and floral. There's a place in <laughs> yeah. the line. Absolutely. So, guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to go semi rapid fire questions. We have over 35 questions that we need to get answered here to get a, like up to curb. And then we have the favorite section, the one that everyone craves because no one cares about anything else but having Jenny and Carly give us wisdom on colors and the sparkles. And we're also going to see their outfits here, too. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to bounce back and forth between the oldest and the newest questions. We're going to get these hammered out. And then I'm going to have the panel pick. Uh, what good questions are, and we'll go from there. Uh, I think this is a good one here from William Barnes. Uh, in fly fishing, tapered leader came out in the 1980s. Sunline's products just selling it for spinning and bait casting. Yeah, it's taking a different market and they're rebranding it. But I do think you're talking about hair too. I mean, fly, fly the, the, you're talking about the fly guys. Hair, like some, there's hybrids too. There's the power fishermen are only going to use, you know, but then you get into the 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 hair and the and the hair jigs and the, the marabou and and then when you can cross those, I mean, so same thing applies for line. I mean, it's, it's yes, it's it's something you can you can kind of mesh together right. and, and catch fish by using both methods. Just no right. different than you were talking about saltwater before saltwater Carolina yeah. rig. I mean, some of this stuff is not new. It's new to a bass fisherman, but. The salt guy has been doing it's it for a long time. Years. Been used for years, right? It's like the spinning rod stuff, and this is why people are like, you know, I instead of buying a six thousand dollar bait caster to skip under a dock, right. I I when I was 
18, you know, for a birthday present, we went snook and red fishing and they give you a pilcher. They put it on a circle hook and you skip it under a dock mm -hmm. with a spinning rod outfit that's, you know, jacked up. Yeah. And then you're pulling these insanely monstrous fish out. But the bass community said, like, no, that's a sissy rod. It don't work. Right. And it's like, I, it does. It's, yeah, it's a big fairy one. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you, if you get a surf rod and then you can skip a mag draft as best. And here's mm -hmm. the, this is the biggest thing, time efficiency. If I blow up a bait cast or an eight hour tournament, that thing is pretty much done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I have to be perfect with that or I'm done. But if you get a beefier spinning gear setup, you're not going to have that issue when you're skipping docks. So that's just where you're taking it from one segment and you're moving it somewhere else where it'll work. You want to learn to skip. Start out with spinning rod. Absolutely. Let's see. Let's go with, here's another one good from the river goat. P-line is my go-to leader material and the Alberta knot quick to retie and strong. I definitely know I'm going to start learning the Alberta knot again just to have both. Yeah, it's a good knot. Yeah, and P-line's gaining a lot of traction. It's a popular brand here. Oh, yeah. P-line's a good yeah, line. Japanese, mm -hmm. the way, there's mm -hmm. detail. You know, years ago, I, I didn't like P-line, but I, I used some here a couple months ago. It actually wasn't bad, but years ago, they, it, I had a lot of trouble. Their line's breaking. definitely improved over mm -hmm. the last five, six years. Definitely. Ooh, here's, a, here's a good one from, I don't know, oh, what? Uh, Jim F. Jim F. There's some good, there's some good YouTube videos on the PR knot if you don't know how to tie it. Um, if there's one knot you guys would want to learn or try to put into your repertoire, what would it be? Any other knot that you guys want to start using or wish you could get better at? <laughs> There's that knot that on a what is it the jerk bait or I don't forget oh, what it's called knot. a loop knot, loop knot. Yeah. probably yeah, give it a little that more. On, on you do that on flukes too or no jerk uh, crank baits? It's soft flukes. Yeah, I use on crank baits. Crank baits. Mm -hmm. What you do is the best way to do that if you're going to throw it on a crank bait or take the split ring off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the split ring makes uh, sense. Yeah, the split ring will mess it up. Mm -hmm. Brew tank. This is a great question. Uh, brew tank. Here you go. You just want a gift card to Chick Fil A for five bucks. Um, Maryland only let y'all use two hooks on the umbrella rig, right? I've never thrown them. What are the laws for the umbrella rig? Is it Denver for state? Uh, as far as Virginia, you could throw all five. I mean, I think Maryland's three, maybe. I mean, don't quote us on this, but there is different. You got to know your yeah. state regs. Yeah, yeah. and each state is different. Check it out. Yep, they will that, check you. That rig came out. Oh, it's like yeah. ten hooks on that mm -hmm. son bitch, and one cast. You're done for the day. <laughs> You talk about wearing out way. your shoulder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You Definitely. throw that thing all day. Well, there's that farmer's umbrella rig. It's like two tiered and it's got it looks like a, a chandelier. A, yes, it does. <laughs> and it's got, I don't know, maybe 10 hooks. Well, you I don't know. know. I can't, I can't salt water. Eight or 10. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's right. Sure, Same thing. Yeah. We talked about that's all in that school. It's got its place. It's all all lines. Lines. Yeah, it is. And, and guess what? Those fish are pretty smart because it mm -hmm. used to be where you could fill a limit one cast and now they're starting to shy away from it. It's not, yes. it's not the silver bullet it used to be. Yeah. No, they get accustomed to it, you know. Paul Elias won that tournament, that tournament on, and it just went spiraled out of control after that. Everybody was here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's like forward, forward facing sonar too. Like, um, so big slack is it's basically Egypt bent on steroids. It's massive, and they are getting used to forward facing sonar. Yeah, I'm I've seen that on his. I, I'm starting to see it. Like, when you would come up to him and you'd shine it, and I, I swear to God, they turn. And so the bigger ones specifically, you hit them with that beam, and all of a sudden, that that far out? I'm seeing it if it's under 35? eight, feet? yeah, under eighty feet, a hundred percent. Like if it's thirty, they're gone. Like rarely do they stay at a hundred ish. At a hundred ish, you can hit them, and they don't move as much. Yeah. Um, Ken, you you can talk about this. We found this one. We found this one log that was straight up and down, and about. 12 feet of water it came up to five feet of the surface and when we shine on it there were two perfect images on that thing they looked like bass they mm -hmm. acted like bass because they would they would leave when our boat came back and then when we would come back they would set right back up mm -hmm. and then i throw i threw a glide bait out to see if they would follow it because thought like it's crappy that sucker's not gonna follow us they they followed it mm -hmm pulled them off they they stayed off and then they go back to the tree it was a, we thought it was a bass when i got within about 80 feet under pointing at them they would just move off and we'd leave and then when i cranked the thing out to 120 and i tried to stare at them i could see that they were still there mm -hmm. so i don't know if it was my trolling motor or the forward-facing sonar but if i stuck them as i got closer they just started to shy away it was mm -hmm. so weird so i don't know how that's going to change fishing well i think like deer are the same way like they're curious too though so they might they might go away but they're going to still come back because they don't know what it is they're going to 
check it out. And I think fish the same way. They're curious. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. And it might spook them, yeah. even if you throw in. People talk about, you know, soft entry and stuff. But even if you spook them, they might be skittish. But they're going to they're gonna turn back around because what was that? Right. They're going to come back and they're going to check it out. So, yeah, yeah I think it's going to change a little bit. Yeah. I think it's going to push fish to shallow. I think you're right. I think the more people that get it, it's going to push fish shallow. I think. I mean, it, it works, but, you know, you get two two foot of water. Two, three foot, yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, not to make this a whole pan optics thing where we get your questions, but it, it's, and I was telling, you know, Ken, I was telling you this in the boat the other day. It's not how many fish I've seen sniping. It's all the other data that I got from it. It's insane. Yeah. When you know areas not to fish anymore, that to me is like how much time I would waste on like this point used to work. And then you shine like there's not a damn thing here. Right. I'm gone. And, and that to me, or your cast lineup, when you see the brush pile, you cast to it and then you pan away. So you're not just torturing them with a lot radar. Of time in the tournament. So much time. And still how those fish disappear on you. Those fish were so sandwiched to the rock. You, we weren't looking for fish, generally speaking. You'd find a no nothing little ledge and it looked like nothing there. You throw your drop shot out and as soon as it hit bottom, they'd come up and go look at it. Even with the $100,000 of technology, they can still hide from you, which is, which is insane it's to me. It is. It really is. Uh, back to the questions. Uh, sorry, I didn't see. It. Oh, here's a, here's a big one. Big Mike's Chronicles. I'd like to give you all guys a uh, a tip and figure out. Last year, I had got. Let's try to read now. I would like to give you guys a tip that I figured out last year. I had got me the smallest frog I could find, and it was very warm. So I was working that small frog through those leaves, and they crush it. A small frog in the leaves. That's interesting. I didn't know that at all. Let's see here. Let's pull out another one here. Okay. What does Travis have something nice to say? I see Jared has his Monday suit on. Stop by today and picked up 2.5. That's Yama a big word. Yamatanikis. Yeah. Yamatanikis. Yama uh, stop it. <laughs> Can't wait to try them on the DOA. Yeah, they were. Thanks, Travis. Nobody dresses better than you, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Talk to him all day. I can start like Yeehaw. We already answered that one. Chris Palmer, oh, this one here. Yeah, oh, that's, oh, that's my, uh, <laughs> Chris Palmer. Yeah. And then Chris, I, I know the link's not going through. Don't worry about it. Uh, guys, link in the, I'm re-uploading this as the podcast episode and on YouTube tomorrow. It'll have a link to all of the guide service questions and everything. I don't, Facebook's being weird with links right now, but everything will be linked uh, down wise, below. In my folks, I'm going to say, I tried to figure it up one time and it's, uh, it's in the $10,000 range. Just back on. On your boat. On my boat. Do you have do you have equal amount in the garage or in the basement too? I don't talk about what's in the bill. You don't talk about the bill then. So it's only we can double or triple that. It's just ten thousand any one time in the yeah. I would yeah, I'm talking about eight, nine thousand I wouldn't even know where to I mean yeah, it's hard. It's, it's hard to guess. Yeah. That's just a guesstimation. If you like me too, the problem I have, I don't take inventory, I don't have a good accurate inventory. So I'll think I'm out, or I'll I'll be like, man, I like it. Oh, I'll buy it. I'll go home. I've already got already two packs of it. I can tell you and where like, every bait. Really? Yeah, I got. I'm OCD. So I know where you every bait organized. is. Yes, down to what depth and everything. And I carry 32 rods on my boat. Also. 32 wow. rods. Awesome. He does. He really does. Wow. <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> I will show you. Your wife was just like, so there you go. There's some like, hey, I need to get some more. Lonnie's got 32. I got another 20. I, to well, and that's an express a rod locker, but it's not very like big. And I got all 32 rods. Wow. Of course, we need to do the ratio per age, Thomas. Yeah, that's true. These guys yeah. are older. Yeah. He was yeah, talking exactly. earlier about the, about the, I thought he was going to bring up the Indians, like when he was hanging out with the yeah. Indians. Yeah. With the fly fishermen and stuff. I don't want to go like, back to that. He was far, talking earlier. But I, I you know, yeah, I got a little age on But you know what? I grew up in a great time. Right. Uh, sure did. Chris, you just won a gift card to uh, let's go a five dollar gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Um, again, Instagram, got, Facebook, or email uh, me, and I'll get that to basically you. Basically, I'll just end up carrying out a. Uh, I'll try to figure out where I'm going. I'll just have my one tack, one or two tackle bags, but I'll have them designed, or fixed up for whatever I'm wherever I'm fishing. I'll loaded. probably get robbed. Yeah, they're loaded, loaded. and then I'll have uh, you know I usually carry eight to maybe 10 rods uh, depends on if i'm fishing by myself or with somebody if i'm with somebody I'm doc can't it. retire yet so that's how much tackle he owns just to give you an idea i'm gonna say too what i'm understanding is we got to remember this thomas when you get to retirement obviously you're gonna be on a fixed income so you have to collect 
get everything you need to before yes. Yes. the yeah. income yeah. comes yeah. in. Yeah. So, exactly right. and if you got to hide it yes. on the you wife or whatever, get, you, you got to get, get it. All this before you retire. And then that way, when that's they're, why they're, I'm yeah. in process. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you, I've been collecting lures since 1980. So, I used to when I fish tournaments. I started fish tournaments in 1980. I would go to a tackle shop that was on the, the lake, yeah, and it, I made it a every time I went in, I made it a thing to buy at least two lures okay i gotta ask this question okay in, in in your life since the indians what is one lure that you will never sell you might not use it but you just want to own it i know what it is. that i have or have I or one either one either or uh one lure uh i've got a, a storm lure they don't make anymore it's crankbait crank yeah, yeah. and uh I, they stopped making them anymore early 90s you probably don't throw it anymore either it's the you? one where the oh, under- no, i bought extra when i oh, got, did you? You got so, plenty. yeah the one with the underbodies worn so bad it got, got cut in half because of the yeah. was- but let me tell you guys something if you if somebody tells you you can have one lure in my box go to the box and get the one that is the most beat up yep. lure yes got. missing an it's got a line right that yeah. one is the one that's caught the most yeah and then that's what you yeah that's true yeah it's true yeah it ain't gotta be pretty no it would be a crankbait, yeah. I got one. I got some more a lot of money. All right. Okay, we're getting through these questions because we already had 15 new ones come in. My goodness, we are alive. Yep, we had we bounced up to like 45 or back down to 35 people. Um, we got – Jerry, you say this question. I typically fish English. the South Fork of the Shando in late spring. Are the water temps this time of year similar to – or will water temps drop faster in the fall as days go shorter? Yes, absolutely. Water temperatures now are in the – 50s and it's supposed to be what in the 30s this week well, this week it's going to be a cold front coming through so, so the, the south fork is going to drop mm, dramatically but what drop. people need to understand that we didn't know is as it drops for especially for smallmouth i'm speaking all water smallmouth on these rivers prefer it colder and so yeah. don't just because i know it's hunting season all the way the from now until the winter some of the largest fish all year could be caught in the next three or four months yeah. and so yeah, just and, get that straight in your mind. There's a big opportunity too. Is the colder it gets, you know, if you can, if you can bear the elements. You know, if you get a mild day at 45, you mm-hmm. go out there fishing. You're going right. to be fishing by yourself. That's right. More than likely, right. it's going to give you the opportunity to get on fish that, you know, if you have 15 to 20 boats on the water, it's going to be a little different to fish in this section. But this is the time <laughs> you can go out there and enjoy it and slow down. Yeah, you can catch some really. The good quality's fish. better. Yeah. yeah, I was on Riverton in March this year. The water temperature was. In the forties, and I caught that smallmouth. It was five pound, five point six two pounds yeah. on a hair jig, and what you know, water was. I caught fish thirty nine degree water on river. Yeah, absolutely. smallmouth. Do you guys ever wash a jig in the current? This is from Justin Rush. What is washing a jig? Yeah. Oh, my Probably Justin, what do you mean by that? What do you, you say? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's actually, it wash, like wash let it down. wash down in the it's, current. It's, yeah. yeah. Oh, what he's okay. talking about is it's the same way you do like two, but you throw it up. That's rush. You just, you, you're oh, letting it. Gotcha, you you, okay. you, you okay. keep your rod. Right, you want to keep it just like coming on the bottom with the current. You know, kind of wash down. Yes. That's the same thing we talked about up there at Tuscan. You throw that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Throw and just let it in the river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. That's yeah. That's kind of like just sitting still, but. What he's talking about is you throw it up. But the water, water. Yeah, yeah, you keep your rod. You just want it to just kind of just stay with the current and just let it come that's down. A, that's and a great technique. Small mouth. Yeah. When they, when that's not like a mad top technique to me. Yeah. Well, you know what it is. That's another trout fisherman with, yes. the, with the drift, yep. the yep. right yep. drift. I mean, yeah, because like, trout, trout, yeah. you know, if it ain't the same speed as that drift, yeah, that's right. they won't even That's why, it. like you said, too, even throwing out behind and letting the boat just drift. Yes. Staying the boat current drift will give you a more natural right presentation. Hmm. Let's see. So. Hmm. 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 What is wash shake? you got that? So I've got that. Uh, I went to mono across the board. That's a good one. Let's see. I think we're almost semi caught up, and I might have to do a. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, Mark Burke. You just want a gift card to Chick Fil A, five dollars. Same old. Say, actually, I have your number. Never mind. I'll get it out to you. Shaky head or jigging worm? Shaky head for me. Just uh, mm-hmm. different different presentations. How you can fish is fast, slow. Mm-hmm. For me, it's a shaky head. But you know, somebody else can be the good one. Shaky. I like shaky head. Shaky head. 
All right. I think we're going to get about two more questions in, guys. And we'll maybe at the back end, if people want to stay longer, we can do a, uh, we can do some more questions. But I want to keep this under 10 hours. Uh, let's go. What was that other question? We had a really cool one. I thought this was interesting. Here we go. We got Beaver Hall. And yeah, I know I said you had second place. I'm sorry. He actually had fourth place. My apologies. Beaver Hall, can you guys get a hold of the old 101 pork roin? Roin? He's talking about the pork uh, roin. Uncle, pork roin. Pork roin. Uncle Josh's. Bro, I'll, yeah, Uncle yeah. Josh. They, they, they. They got some. Butch Ward showed me the trick to them. Plus, I still today make the jigs the way Butch showed me. Also, uh, not by, by blood, but by marriage, I'm related to Butch Ward. I didn't know that until the tournament day. Yeah, never knew that. But apparently her family's mother twice removed. Uh, Butch Ward. There you go. Her family's got 10,000 people in it. It's like, yeah, they're Spanish. But yeah, that uncle, if it's uh, Uncle Josh, they it was very, very popular. And evidently they had a shortage on pork. Because uh, it's actual pork grind, right? And uh, they discontinued it for long enough that when they brought it back, it it it's lost its and back. never came back. Oh, and so it, things, man. but we have it. But we got there, it. There's it. another company. There's some other companies making making it. it. Yeah. My dad. It was very loved effective. It. Yeah, loved it. Let's see who did that one. And this is, guys, we're getting to the point. We're getting big enough that I'm going to need like a admin for this chat. Good God, you guys are just pumping them out. Uh, here we got, we got, we got two more and then we got, uh, Phil Liggins. I typically fish the South for, no, we already did that. One. Oh, good. This is awesome. Sweet. I'm actually getting caught up. That's amazing. Where was that? Where's a good one about, I don't fish. Oh, here it is. Oh, there it is. Uncle Josh's, <clears throat> Uncle Josh's juice. No, Uncle Josh's pig. Pork. Yeah, pork. I don't know why. Yeah, you don't want his juice. Uh, I don't fish many jigs due to the experience, but would a football jig or a swim jig be better suited for the leaves? You just mentioned. A so that was earlier. Football jig is made for like rock. Yep. And like, good, uh, this is the big one. I like that one on one. The Archie Head. Mm. Yeah, Archie Head jig is is basically uh, any. You want to fish the bottom when you got leads like at those bass. They're going to push to the bottom because it's going to. They're going to be in the water column coming down, so they're going to get real close to the bottom. Mm. They're not going to be up in there and try dodging all these leaves and stuff. So you want to fish bottom baits. When you got a lot of leaves like that, that's the only way. Without going in a lot of leaves, I guess. Mm, I think we got guys. Actually, we did a thing. We got all caught up on the questions. That's amazing. So we just blast through forty-five questions. So um, what we're going to do is, if you guys have some closing thoughts, if we get a couple more questions, and if you want to stick around and answer them, great. But Carly and Jenny, you've been sitting around here. And Cole, oh, oh why not? Good. There you go. That's the defeatist Very attitude nice. I want. Yeah. Um, so, guys, don't worry. Uh, we'll have them back on to do some closing thoughts. We're just going to switch it out so these girls can go home. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, again, guys, please hit the like and subscribe. It really helps out the algorithm. And, again, this episode will be uploaded tomorrow. Hopefully, sleep I don't need. Uh, I'll put a link in the episode description to the Brothers Guide Service. Um, and... I'll put a link in for Doc because he's awesome. I don't know what I'm linking, but we'll link something. Uh, and, and also, huge shout out to Doc for winning the costume contest. Uh, that picture will drop tomorrow. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. Let's see. And then while we're uh, while we're while we're uh, segueing here to the to the new group, and then Carly, if you could like put that camera on me real quick. That way it gives you guys the ability to get set up. And with the magic of Hollywood, as she zooms in on my face, you won't see all the other chairs. Perfect. Up a little bit more and then brighten that bad boy up a little bit. I know this is going to be hideous. You guys are not going to really like this here. I, I know. I You're looking at me like, oh, my gosh. What the but, hell yeah, is even that? Um, yeah, so guys, tournament went, yeah. You, while you guys are setting up, I'm just going to be talking just to keep things going here. Um, yesterday, I got to fish the Butch Ward competition. And again, first of all, huge shout out to Cole and Ken for winning the Butch Ward. That was absolutely... What the hell is even that? That's, that's what I'm saying. Curtis Cole, thank you. So, that's, you did really good. Uh, you guys won eight pounds, 15 ounces. That place was really tough. It really was. I was, for some reason, expecting a little bit bigger weights. But that's because I started to listen to the doc talk way, way too much. And I heard people in practice saying it might take 10 pounds, 12, 13, possibly to win this thing. Um, and it really didn't. It, it fished extremely tough. I think the top five had eight pounds, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have the data out in front of me. Um, we were managed about five, which is 
for my first time fishing there in the winter, guys, granted, this is my first year fishing big slack at all. So I have a pretty good understanding of the summertime bite there. I have no idea how to fish that place in the fall. Uh, my plan is tomorrow night, I'm going to do a live stream Patreons only. We're going to go through detail about that tournament and how that goes through. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we are what we're going to do now is we have the segment everyone waits for. No one cares about the Bass and Brothers or Doc or Jared. What they care about is these people's opinions on colors. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go turn the camera. We have the Miss the Legends. I'm going to get the camera set up. Get cozy. Oh, I told Tom I didn't like the picture of the camera. There you go, Cole. There's your camera. There That's you perfect. Oh, we can share it. We can share it. Okay. No. Who am so I? Guys, Ellie Mae? You're Ellie Mae. But I'm Ellie Mae. We're, We're the Beverly Hillbillies. I'm Ellie Mae dressed up like a scarecrow, jack o' lantern. Mm -hmm. Kind of. And Cole didn't even know who the Beverly Hillbillies were. So. But he's a country boy, obviously. He's, he's got his cowboy boots. That's right. He's ready to rock and roll. Me too. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, you can't see. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who's first? Uh, Cole's oh, first. Cole's first. So this is our first time bringing Cole on. He was a little nervous. We said he could join us today. Uh, <laughs> I just started. <laughs> um, anyway, so Cole's going to tell us about his favorite baits. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was pretty easy because I throw the same things all the time. <laughs> and I don't really fish this time of year. Uh, first off, and torpedo. Just do one thing. Oh, just do the one thing? Right yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy, and come get torpedo. the come get the bait. Right Start there. Off. Summertime <laughs> top water bite. I don't uh I don't fish this time of year, but I've caught more fish on this than I have any other bait. Do you fish? Yeah, yeah. 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 Summertime, just not, not like this us. time of year. I'm I'm hunting this time of year. I don't fish. This and time he works here, so he learns a lot. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's number one. All right. I do new things. I don't do what I like to use. I just do what we got in. And um, these have been super hot. Nickels. Spoon. All right. So I got the mini. I got the Lake Fork Flutter Spoon and the Mojo. So we got these in. Um, you can see them. I actually just do one at a time. Well, I've got categories. You're cheating. No, I've got more than y'all. Okay. Hey, Carl, what is this? <laughs> space out she looks like she's no i'm fine i got my little bucket okay. i got my little bucket i'm good so i got we got the spoons in the nickel spoons they've been really hot apparently i've been they, a lot of people have been using them on like frederick lately yeah. yeah so um but word of advice make sure you have a heavy rod a guy came in today uh his friend was using a medium heavy and he kept breaking his rod and Ooh, losing things and oh stuff no. like that so he came in and finally bought a dobbins fury so he could throw these big spoons Nice. Carly's up. Right. So y'all know because of the TikToks and content <laughs> I've been pushing that Jake's Bait and Tackle's biggest sale ever is like ending tomorrow. So if you want to take advantage of any of the merch they've got going on right now, like everything's marked down by like $5 less than like asking price originally. 20%. 20% if not more. plus more. And then if you're a Patreon member to Fishing the DMV, you get an extra 5% off. So like come in and take advantage of it. So I just went through all of the stuff they had on sale and picked out really shiny look of things. All right. So I found, <laughs> I found, uh, oh, it's a duo. It's yes. a micro. I think those are awesome. I don't know why people haven't. Micro like Dawn. What I really like about this, it looks kind of like a, like a like a jerk bait, but um, it also is. It looks like it's gonna have like great action in the water because it's, it's like a mini spin spin broken spin up bait. in like three different pieces, and it's gonna have great action, as Jake or as Jerry so. likes to say for Jake's bait and tackle. All right, so that's my pick of the evening. All right, Cole's turn. turn again. Turn. All right, All right what we got? number two. Hmm? Oh, he does. You have your own mic. What's that? Never mind. Number two, we got the. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you need to do that. <laughs> this, the four inch young dinger, cheap. I like them. I like the color. And they're cheap. Yeah. They're cheap. Uh, Super for the college. Wacky. Thing. Exactly. Exactly. Budget. Budget oh bait God. here. Budget bait. Budget. Ooh, uh, yeah. Wacky rig. Texas rig. Anything. Very I catch versatile. fish on these. And Cole, all year round. All year round. Right. Exactly. Can't go wrong. 
All right. Next new thing I've got is Z-Man. So everybody's been asking about these, the TRD Gobi. And we got the Gobi SN. I've got a couple different colors. They just came in. Um, these are mm. their new Ned bait. So it floats. A little Gobi. I know you guys up north will really like those, right? I bet you Doc hasn't seen these yet. Have you, Doc? They're cute. The TRD Gobi. Cute little fishies. Perfect for up north. Oh, yeah. 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 Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Hold, up like to a little mad Tom. Hold up to the camera That's for us. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Here. Right there. Sorry, TV. Tom. Oh, all right. Yeah. Any cute? Yeah. Cute there we go. Here, you want the actual? Oh, oh here's the one. I got short arms, people. All right. Yeah. So TRD Gobies are in the house. I've got about four oh, colors. Yeah, um, I have several more on order. Um, that catches fish. Yeah. yeah. That thing will work. Look at that. And it's pretty. And it's chartreuse. It looks really good. On the bottom. That's what I was going for tonight. I know. All right. So it's my turn. All right. So cool. thank you. I was listening to what everybody was saying just a couple minutes ago about chartreuse being the color for fall. So again, I went through the discount bait section and i found this cute little cast master bait fish i don't know but it's chartreuse colored and it's on sale for five dollars come in stock up great for trout small fish jenny knows third on the list and final uh these crawls i don't fish them on the bottom that often i actually like to wait weightless riggies and i fish them on the riggies rig these riggies oh no cole is not hip with the times all right the biggest fishing this top water though i actually caught my pb on these things top water right along the bank you caught fish with them top water you heard me i caught fish with them i'm serious stop it yeah I caught them. <laughs> you all didn't let me finish. Okay. Four pounder, actually. On Four the pounder? Four Whoa. pounds. Did you take a picture? I don't catch big fish or a lot. But, <laughs> but just... I try. So. Tom you just... lost Carly. Um, <laughs> Tom just caught Carly. the camera with his foot. Because he was laughing. All right. So did you take a picture? I don't think I got a picture. Okay, good. Because if you didn't take a picture, it didn't happen, right? Of course. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next. Um. Since Carly's talking about discount things, I'm just going to do this one really quickly. <laughs> Fish monkey gloves are 25% off now. We've got a bunch. We've got the stubby. We've got um, colors, all sorts of stuff. Carly's looking at me like, why do you need those? Yeah. Um, why do you wear gloves while you fish? Um, they, Thomas, why do you wear gloves when you fish? I, I don't mean, know. because It's nice and it's grippy. grippy. It's grippy. But could these also, what could these double as? Just Keep warm. your hands warm a little bit. Probably. Why could they wear, be like workout? They um, no. No. You could probably work out with them. What? What? <laughs> well, you asked me a question because I need to get in here. So. Oh, yes, use them. Oh, good oh, no, Just there's other mine. Jump in. <laughs> <laughs> you really? Okay. Gloves. Oh, oh. Do you need? Do you need them? You need them? Show your hand like you're a hand model. Yes, like, I only am. fans. Oh. So the reason um, I wear this type of gloves in the summertime is really for skin cancer. Big thing oh. is I've known a lot of guys growing up that don't have a nose anymore. They have holes in their cheeks. Carol Ann, I'm sorry. She had to have her whole new face put on because of how bad her skin cancer is. So when you're out there and you're getting hit with the sun habitually, you don't think about your hands. And so in the summertime, I really like to wear gloves, especially when it's super hot out. And again, in the wintertime, it's easy to wear gloves because you're, you're freezing to death. But we don't think about really all those other times of year. What I like to do is I'll have two pairs of those. That way I have a backup pair if they get really wet and damp. But again, it's a little thing just to kind of keep the sun off you. And, and the, they're Yes. And one announcement. Make sure you, I know guys don't like to do this. I'm a very abnormal person. I go to the doctor routinely. Go get checked for skin cancer habitually. It creeps up on you and you don't want to wait too long for that. Yes. Totally agree. Take care of yourself. Yes. Jerry would agree with you on that. Do you want to do one more? Because you have yes, really I'm going to do box. one more. Okay. Um, these guys are just kind of a little extra. So we brought in hot tail uh, lures. They're custom made musky baits that are made here locally up in Martinsburg. This is the last one I have at the moment, um, but apparently he's got, he's pretty popular. But so if you're the big musky guy, we got 
Yeah. That's massive. Um, no, but so we do have a lot of musky stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. And it's Halloween. -y. Yeah, because it's orange. Mm -hmm. All right. So oh, yeah. the other one that I have. Um, okay. So, okay. The jigs fish love to bite. All right. Another little teeny tiny little guppy thing. And it's chartreuse colored. So winner, winner. And it's only $1.99 right now, y'all. Come That's in and get it. Idea. Okay. And then another one, I'm just going to go for it, is the Guggen Squad clickbait vibrating jig. Made me think Halloween. Look at that. Orange chartreuse. And he's got a little mascara on his eyes. So he's. Are we making you feel down for it? Space, yeah. Like, this is my hell. <laughs> 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 oh, he's used to it. He works at the Spain Town. Sorry. Right. So, um, oh, yeah. Your turn again. Yeah. Okay. My turn. Okay. Next thing that we just got in um, that people are super excited about, and we used to carry them a long time ago, but then. They were just having problems, but they came back and they're amazing. Dirty jigs. So this is the guppy jig head that um, people are saying it's really good for forward facing sonar. You can use those for that. Um, the Matt Allen tactical swim bait head. We got those back in. Um, the Scott Canterbury shaky head. Told that they're amazing and the best there is. And then I got right now I have two jigs from them: um, the Luke Clawson compact kitchen jig and their California swim jig. So again, different colors, different sizes. They are now new at jigs, right? Cole, did you have to put these up? Yeah, I priced them. Yeah, put them up, priced them. <coughs> Cole is getting much yards. faster at his pricing. Noise. Mm -hmm. Right. Tommy. We don't have anybody commenting. People are like leaving us. To, we must not be as entertaining. We still got today. 20 people. Yeah, we do. We do. Oh, 21. 21. <laughs> hey. Uh, well, it's my turn. Oh, um, no, we're not. So, what well, you Cole's got? too young to drink. Oh, no. I meant right. you two. It's my turn. Oh, us two? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Ask a not question, fine. they'll take a shot. Ask All a question, right. they'll take a shot. Turn, Carly. Fine. All right. So, my last, my last picks for the night. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I really like the dark sleeper. They speak to me on an artistic level. They look like cutest little fish ever. And there are, I have, I found a pink one. And then I also found a chartreuse and purple one. And they are only $5.99. One's a one fourth ounce and the other one's a three eighth ounce. And you can compare to the gobies. Yeah. Look at them. They're so them. cute. I love how look the guys all around on us when it comes time. They don't care. Right it's fine. No. It's all right. They don't care. Yeah. Right. Anyway, come on in. Great prices. All right. Last thing I want to talk about, um, unless you have something to talk about, Cole. I'm all out for Did Jerry right. tell you any jokes today? No, probably not appropriate for TV. Cole, hunting. Talk about hunting. Oh, you uh, hunt. Talk about <laughs> hunting. What do you hunt for? Have you caught anything yet? I, I mean, shot anything yet? Look, oh, sorry. I don't, I don't I catch shot. fish. I try to hunt. I sit in the woods. Oh, wait, you've been duck hunting. I've been duck <gasps> hunting. Duck hunting? What was it? That's special. Merganser. 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 They're cute. West Virginia and Virginia. Can't be giving away spots, but uh, floating the river, spooking them up. Mm -hmm. Pretty good time. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm like 0 for probably about eight or nine hunts so far for deer this year. Aww. So <laughs> trying to get in the morning. Yeah, so when so. everybody says kids are always on their video games and stuff, he's nah. not cool. Not this one. Not yeah, this I'm one. sitting in the woods not shooting anything. So well, at least you're in the woods. All right. <laughs> at least you're in the woods. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Trying. Careful. Right. Tomorrow is Halloween, so you don't know. If, like, yeah. Michael Myers is going to be out there just saying. Be careful. I shouldn't go out there. That, you know, that's why saying. we couldn't name a child Michael. <laughs> that's my brother's name. My last name is Myers. Oh, ah, I forgot about that. Yes. All right, last thing. <laughs> Tommy's face right now. I can't. No, we're not very entertaining today. I got. I don't know. Um, he's so embarrassed. <laughs> so we got some more Yak Attack stuff in. Um, we got a couple batteries. Um, got a couple more nets. But the, my thing that I'm most excited about, and I don't even fish. Um, I don't even pack is the Yak Attack backpack. Look at that. So it's you can either get it in a two pack, which is this one that comes with the track mount or and it's got two boxes this is really cool too see so you can open the bottom one or the top one you're not holding it open long enough um, what are the little divots in there for maybe drain water their design well it goes with their um black pack thing their other 
the idea of their other stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so you can also buy just the mounting bracket plus one if you want to put them other places, um, things like that. But you can get the two pack with the mounting bracket for $49.99. Um, anyway, we got a bunch of them in. So great Christmas present. They're brand new. Um, so come on in and grab those. Nice. Um, Thomas is going back through. Yeah. Great episode. Great episode. Yeah, I saw was... somebody about adding adding prices up, Tom. What'd they say? Go back up. That was before. Did you already that was do that one? Yeah. You guys would like to answer it more than that. How much money that I have in tackle? Yeah. Probably fifty dollars. Well, I just added up all the prices for mine just before I sat down. Oh. What we own or what? No, no, no. Shape. For for all, if you bought all the baits that I suggested tonight, mm -hmm. you would end up spending about thirty five dollars. But if you had uh, the the Patreon subscription with Fishing the DMV, you would only spend about thirty one dollars on everything, mm -hmm. and um, so it would save you some extra money. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you see Jim's joke? There Jim's joke? I got a joke. What's worse than ants in the pants? Uncles. Uncles in the pants. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, he had a thing about Jerry too much. All right. Closing thoughts, guys. Um, yeah. Carly loves Halloween, obviously. She's adorable. Cole, did you survive your first? It wasn't that bad. It was like 20 minutes. This was a great experience. It was a good experience. Awesome. We'll great have you experience. back on, definitely. Yes. Next live. I hope I wasn't too on. horrible. We might get like the um old lady crowd. Watch or something. Right. Well, by then you would have, or the young crowd, caught something in your hunting adventures. Caught something, and yes. uh, you'll something. get to talk about it. Why do you think he's like trying to like throw a blanket over? A deer I don't know. I thought that maybe that was a word I shouldn't use <laughs> on a live trap. stream. Cage him up. He could be trapping. No. Wow. Well, but I could. Be, I said. I said duck? caught something. Trap a duck. <laughs> you haven't talked about traps. Yeah. Okay. So no, no, no. Based on this, I feel like these are the conversations he has at parties unless you're. Like, how would you trap a duck? How would you trap a duck? I think you're gonna have to throw a net at it as it flies by, <laughs> or noose it like with honestly, noose, noose the duck. duck. Well, like you know, like wrangle it. <laughs> no, you gotta be a little better than it. Than it, it. <laughs> Not, you got, yeah, you're probably fast. All right, guys. Awesome. my dog caught a quail once. She it flew out the border collie, the bird came out of the bush, she jumped up and grabbed it in mid flight. That sounds illegal. Well, she was a cop. That's freaking awesome. It was Gu awesome. Guys, link in the episode description to everything we awesome. talked about. Guys, link in the episode description to everything we talked about today. Um, Jenny just said we can stay here until midnight. Um, oh. So if you want to keep going. Well, you just said you're okay. We keep going. Um, you okay. Cole's, Cole's done. He's ready to wrap it up. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So tell a quail story. Oh, I just told it. Oh, no. When we were kids, we were walking down. The, the bush started rough, rough, rustling. Rough. And the quail comes out of the bush and my dog jumps up and catches it midair. And my dad like yelled, drop it. And she gave it to him and it blew up. Oh, so she didn't kill it. She didn't kill it. Okay. She was a good hunter. She then it wasn't back illegal. rabbits all the time. Okay. Aww. Good dog. Yeah. Guys, I know you can probably hear the background noise. Yeah, they're still here. They're, they're talking. They're well, still I'm, talking. People fish. would rather talk to them. So <laughs> but, uh, Do you want any, any closing thoughts, guys? I don't have any. Uh, but no, okay. The sale goes on until tomorrow. Um, Cole really, really really wants you to come buy the stuff because he doesn't have to put it back then. I would greatly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to cut one of Cole's fingers off every day that this stuff doesn't Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Call it. Expendable. Cole tolerates us. We'll They're call expendable. it. Did not say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, um, Nobody yeah. said no at He's all. He's, yeah, he doesn't know. Everybody he wants to go into business. Idea. Well, no, he does have a lawn care. Did you just say he doesn't need them? He wants to go into business? Yeah. Yeah. What businessman needs 10 fingers? <laughs> He's got a calculator. Wow. We do not condemn violence here. On no, we don't. Channel. I value Cole way too much to cut off his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best type of employee. Affordable. All right, guys. Thanks for right, tuning thanks in. For Make sure before you log off, give us a like. Come on. If you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you doing? The Let's show go. is not over. She's not. Uh, we're having closing thoughts oh. from Jared and them. Oh, um, you're yeah. Us off. Don't log off. Yeah. Don't log off.
but uh, while we guys. switch out the seats go ahead right. and like the episode this evening we've only got about 20 likes thus far and that's in a combination See, of we Facebook lost, we're losing and YouTube crazy. and on YouTube there's only about five likes so come on people if you what give us two more likes like? I'll kick the women off Let's go. okay is that what you guys want we're already right, getting kicked out sorry sorry for being here Oh, I have one more thing, Thomas. No. Jared can talk about this. Right, you can talk about it. Talk about it. No, Jared knows how to do it. Your your new product. Yeah. No. Tom's new product? Jared's. Oh. All right. Well, you, you need to let us out first. Jared will talk about the new core product. I, don't know if, uh, I mean, I'll talk. You get it all it. fancy. It's got its own little display. One person there. One person there. One person there. I'll go in first. I might just. Okay, I like it. I like it. Oh, right. One out. Yeah. One, two, three. I gotta come back down here. Okay. Everyone gets a chair now. This is nice. This week's gonna be a good week. Already did. All right, cool. Oh. This is gonna be a good week, hunting right there. Three ruts. Look at this. Everyone gets like this. Amazing. Everyone gets a mic now. All right. You know what? Hey, let me let me. This is great, like these sound effects now that you'll hear this in the episode. But round of applause to the girls. They're a little upset because last time they were the uh, they were the main tip of the live stream. I think that was because they were also doing shots for comments. Um, but uh, Jerry does not like that. Jerry doesn't drink, so we want to make sure we, we put a put a tamp on that. Jerry drinks. Um, <laughs> Ooh, don't miss drinking in the. Uh, uh, I like great. Yeah, we were talking about. Uh, I, I was talking about the skin cancer thing earlier about like how important it is to do that. Yeah, Check your face. Absolutely. Um, I'm getting to the age, guys, where I'm going to be making my first appointment, too, to get checked out yeah. next year because... Very important. Yeah, well, thank you. Love you, too. But, yeah, the fact is to make sure you get all that checked out. Um, we had over, I think it was 48 questions, comments. We had 22 likes, and we had over 50 people watching at one time. Thank you guys so much for making that such a... This is a really good show. Um I'm going to give just kind of the boring recap of what's coming next. And then we're going to get into our closing thoughts. So everyone have, have their piece. Our next live stream, our next live stream from Jake's. We're going to do the last Monday, as we said, last Monday of every month. So the next one is going to be the Monday after Thanksgiving. I'm going to make sure with, with uh, Jared, we're good for that. Um, that's going to be the December edition. We're going to be talking about what's coming up for Christmas time, what you should be fishing in December. And then next week, we're going to have a double feature. I'm going to have Tyler Heppel on. He is a guide at Lake Anna. He's not associated with woods and water. He's an up and coming stud. He basically cashes a check there at Lake Anna almost any time that he launches his boat for a tournament. And he's been doing all the Lake Anna fishing reports. So I'm going to have him on. I'm going to hopefully have Mike on for MVKBA. He's going to talk about the season in review. That is next week's live stream. The other thing that Jared and I had, and Carly, if you could go wide shot here, and drum roll with this, we just finished recording a really cool ass episode last week with Mr. Halliker. So it is in the books. We had Mr. Jason Halliker on the show talking about some really cool things. It's the smallmouth stocking program, by the way, guys. I'm hopefully going to be launching that in two weeks, depending on my upload schedule, just so I can get that up there. But that's baked in and ready to go. So we're all caught up with all that yucky stuff. That was well, a great episode too. That had the hatchery. They've up. They with the money they have got oh, from yeah. a lawsuit. They got they've got that up and running. Yeah, that money's being cooked. Put it's to good use. fascinating mm -hmm. information. Yeah, that was a really really good episode. Yeah. And he's. I also loved. And this is just. I'm gonna. It's really. It was a little thing, but the fact that Jason listened to all of our episodes mm. and that he listened to the Odenkirk one. Yes. And he brought up something that was interesting. Where yes. in the Odenkirk episode, Odenkirk made this interesting observation that we had grass carp in all these lakes. And then once all the grass carp started dying off, the water willow showed up. Mm -hmm. And then Jason was like, it was an interesting thing that he said because he's like, you know what? Come to think of it, he's right. Like mm -hmm. he, Jason even realized what Odenkirk said in that. And it was so mm -hmm. interesting that that kind of like collaboration mm -hmm. where they're all listening to it mm -hmm. and coming to this hypothesis that maybe the grass carp actually did eat the water willow mm -hmm. and kept it down. So I don't know. I thought that was a really interesting no, little very thing. Fascinating. But um, I think you had something there that you have to show off, correct? Yeah, so there's two things. Um, I'll talk about this real quick. The um, We talk a lot about Ned Rigs. The big TRD, big fan of as well. Um, and with a little bit bigger hook yeah. and a weed guard here, you know, fished on the bottom. And that thing will stand up. And that really, thing will really stand nice. up. Yes. Um, now, when you go to the smaller one, I just want to th throw in something here real quick. 
the hooks, a lot of people didn't like the original Z-Man hooks. They were a thin wire and they would break on you. This style hook right here, though, is a little more sturdy. Yes. That thing is going to stand up. Now, that's going to give you an exposed hook on a small TRD, the 2.75 inch. Um, and I do want to talk to that real quick, too. This thing, I could not figure out why these were so effective with fish and big fish and why they ate them until I put one in a, in a minnow tank back here. Now, that thing on the ground sitting down, anytime a minnow feeds, it's going to be nose down, tail up, and it's right. going to be feeding just like yeah. that. And if you're fishing on the bottom and it's doing this number, when they come along, they're going to they're gonna eat it up. Uh, but when you can also bring it up, if you jig it up, that 2.75 inch, you put you go back and measure those medium-sized minnows, 2.75 inch. And when I brought it up in that, you can't tell the difference between this and a minnow. So in my mind, it triggered. That's what, even though this looks so stupid to us, mm -hmm. That's what the fish thinks it is. Now, I want to show real quick. That's a exposed hook. Real quick here, and you can do it on this, or you can do it on this little mini tube. Also, a Z-Man mini tube. Yeah, this hook uh, we carry here, just ask us about it. It's a Texas style. It's a net hook, but with a Texas style. And I would only use this on the last tech Z-Man products. But pull it through just like you would a Texas. And then once you get that last tech up over top, now you're going to be able to turn it just like you would a Texas, bring it through. Okay. And now then just, you know, pinch it like you would to make it weedless. And now you got a weedless Ned presentation. Now on the, the Susquehanna rivers with a lot of rock, you know, you get hung up. This will, you'll, you could still possibly get hung up. I'm not going to say you're not, but you have less chance of getting hung up with that style hook. I'll give you a little tip about these. If you like to see man's really brilliant. So, like Jared said, they hang up a lot. But if you got a bait like this, mm -hmm. or this, it's more buoyant. So what happens is it still stands up on the bottom, but it doesn't allow it to get hung up as much because it kind of gotcha, keeps the pressure up. up keeps the heavier it, it is, the more yeah. it wants to sink. Got you know? it. Yeah. So yeah. when you when you put something like this on there, it really reduces your hang up a lot. And the other thing you were talking earlier too, just real quick on that, you can drag that on the bottom. You can jig oh, it. Yes. It doesn't matter. They both e work equally yeah. well. Just have it in the water, basically. No, wrong way, no wrong way to fish that. And the next thing here, too, and now, guys, please understand, too, I'm not an expert on any of this. Uh, this, again, 90% of what's in here comes from customer recommendation. Hey, you need to get this. This is what's new. This is what's hot. I think part of the, you know, the whole forward-facing sonar brought about this. Uh, it's core tackle, um, the hover rig. Now, what I think... And again, don't quote me on this. I'm not an expert, but I think the idea on your traditional weight forward, weight forward hook style hooks, that's going to drive that down in this fashion, which is sometimes yeah. good. Uh, when you're doing that forward facing sonar, you want this to be horizontal presentation here. If you're scoping it and you're looking over here, the way these, this weight is centered along the shank here, it's a weight distribution I believe so that now you're going to keep that bait like this. Now it is true too. This thing will glide down or also kind of go in a circle down. And I know tube guys have talked about that too, depending on where you pull it out of the tube head. If you're close to the end or down here, you'll get a different fall yeah. on that. So, and, and you know, it, the, the thing about forward facing sonar and using this, you can actually throw it, you know, like on a spinner rod. And if your fish are like, 30 feet out you can throw it 40 feet and let it mm. pend them yeah, right keep right. pressure on your line and just let it it'll swing it'll right swing right it'll down set. and again i'm not thomas i don't that's not something i use i do like the fluke um i'm, I'm gonna mess around with it but I, I don't know a lot about it i might i might be totally off on that i don't know but you know i know there's people out there that use it and know more than i do i think what's interesting about all this stuff so as you guys know um again uh, please try to, if you would, if you can follow me on Patreon, we do Patreon live streams now where I kind of go born into the weeds about this stuff. I follow so many Japanese anglers on Instagram, YouTube. I don't understand the language barrier, but I watch what they do because those techniques they are in literally two years, whatever they're fishing now will be over here to be hot. Everything they do is subtle and realistic, subtle and realistic. And so they have this new technique where it's basically a, um, it's a swim bait with not a paddle tail. So it looks like a fluke. It's super realistic, but they put a spin head. So, you know, so good. And it has a, a, a spin piece in the front without a weight and you cast it out and you're just basically doing nothing, but just creeping the reel. And this thing just does this light shimmy. 
everything they're doing right now is how do I make this photorealistic and just creep through the water column? And there was that angler, I apologize for his name, that that did great at Lake Murray. I think he won at the St. Lawrence or um, no, it was St. Clair. I, I think he won at. Yeah. Yes. And he's doing the same thing. It was with, I think, that technique, but it had like a build soft plastic. So it would angle and just give that little shimmy. And it's. He's got like five garmin live scope it's insane he's giving all those fish cancer wow. it's insane well, yeah he, he's, spoke, he's got them all pointed yeah, yeah. He's, he's doing the 360 it's insane but then when he gets out there it's all finesse stuff but yeah those guys that's you know the, the reason i think that is is because there's so many and, and when the pandemic came they got one the leg fishing boom yeah it's crazy yeah it's so got they see so it. much mm -hmm. now it's almost you have to you have to present stuff that really looks mm -hmm. close to real realistic. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you absolutely have to. And this is why I, you know, if you keep looking at all the tournaments that are happening right now, you're not seeing as many guys winning with like a big old bait caster flipping and pinching yeah. circumstantial, depending on your lake. But if you, when we have Odin Kirk on, we have Halleck, we have so many of these guys from DWR, all these lakes are going to get clearer mm -hmm. and there's going to be less cover in them, especially if, if there are certain lakes like, like uh, Kerr Regsor, Buck Island, they have a zero hydrilla tolerance. So they're going to kill all the grass. Well, if you have no grass and all the wood starts to rot away, it's going to be gin clear water that's going to be finesse. And more and more finesse is going to be playing. And BFS, for example, uh, two years ago, I tried that out. I'm hooked. I think there is, it's going to become more important in your repertoire to have eight pound test bait casting mm -hmm. setups. Give this stuff a try. You're really going to have more success with it in a lot of circumstances. Well, I think, too, wouldn't you not agree? Like, again, I've always felt there's a reaction bite. And that reaction bite is usually going to be in your feeding windows mm -hmm. when yes. they're feeding and they're hungry. And that may not last very long. You only get a couple of those yeah. a day. So when that does turn off and you're not getting that, you know, power bite is now also the time to switch in. And if you have this in your repertoire, yep. to pull that out of the box, pull that one yeah, of those dirty absolutely. spinning rods yes. out and – Yep. you know bill pitch that to him you might you might get bit Same thing you're talking about downsizing line you might get bit if you if you'll try this but where, you know, we'll change yeah, yep. I, I i i went to 10 pound test grade on all my spinner rods so i can use you know mm -hmm. all the way down to a four pound test leader but that by using braid it increases the sensitivity you get better hook sets you know with any stretch you got it's going to help and your casts are going to be like Country mile, country mile. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, Jim, I saw this was good for the conversation. Uh, Jim F, uh, I use a one on EWG with a one six nail weight, and the other end for the weedless TRD. It works great. Mike and Ellie calls it the small child rig. That is a weird name, Actually, but okay. I go, I, I don't even do a one on now. I go down to a size one. You see, you got how the hook sizes go. You got one, and then one odd, two odd, and then. You got one and a two, so uh, a one hook is actually only like that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and some I'll use the heck out of it. Here's the thing, too, like on that, you people talk about small hooks. You're talking about Rogers hook, sickle hook, and stuff, and yes. people won't. You think you need a big hook, but yeah. I'm going to tell you, and a lot of those hooks, especially that sickle hook, and they, even those nets a lot of time, when they the way they eat it, sometimes you're getting that thing right there. Yes. Wherever and you want. You get through that right there. Mm -hmm. It's not coming off either. I mean. You can catch a five six pound fish on these light wire hooks. hooks. You, just got, yep. you can't horse them. You got right. to, you know, you got to play them in. That's but right. That light line, and you just the, the main thing is having good, good drag, mm -hmm. good reel, and just fighting the fish. You can get them in on light line, real light tack. So, guys, I just bought some hooks. So, I want to show you. So, what I'll do with a lot of these things is I try not to blow this up. They actually make size one. And it's good to hear people talk. That's why it's good talking about this too, because you, I mean, it's a, it's good information. Hey, camera girl, you got to use everything. everything yeah, knowledge you get it's just because it's getting a lot. Well, and you also got to change. So sometimes you, you can zoom in on my face. We had a good what, what one more question to kind of end this thing on on and this. You don't most of the time, <laughs> right? Right. So uh, a a great bait for this here. This is just the one I literally had um, a spark shad here. Get yourself a one aught or two aught. Now, this is where it's important. So, um, Jim mentioned the size of the hook. If you do not want to add a weight, just go up to a two aught hook and you'll have a little bit more weight to it. And that'll get you a slink. Take this bait, and all you're going to do is just nose hook it. And I want you to try to take a bait like this, and it has to be a, a full body swim bait. Now, here's the deal this is what I picked up from the Japanese anglers. These full body swim baits want to swim more naturally than your your typical kai tech 
a typical Kai tech or a fluke style, it doesn't have the aerodynamics of a full body that has all of its fins. Right. So when you nose hook this type here and you slowly reel it through the water column, it's still going to swim. It's going to swim nice and slow, but because you didn't put the hook all the way through to give it a spine, it's going to have more secondary action as it goes through the water column. And I think as anglers here in America, we're so paranoid of only having a hook at this part of the bait. Mm -hmm. But do you remember the banjo minnow? And that sucker was still, it was nose hooked too. Yes. Um, and this will work even on a smaller swim bait here, but doing this or um, a flick shake hook would be the flick same shake. thing nose hook that and swim it through the water column the action is completely different than when you actually thread that hook all the way through so yeah give give that a shot as well Ooh, no the old banjo yes, man. sir banjo <laughs> man. Banjo. Banjo. but um it was a jig but it, it had a it looked like a tube but it slipped inside its weight and it had tentacles and you throw it, and it would come back to you. Oh, oh, oh God! The that. torpedo, yeah. not torpedo. It, um, I yeah, she. It. I remember that exactly was, what you're talking right about. The banjo, the magic, lure. the magic minnow, or the magic lure. I, I, magic I, lure. It, it yeah. It was weird. I had to. Be, it came in a little kit. You know? Oh, I was young. I was really young. I tried. It but, worked. Yeah. Guys, uh, closing thoughts today. Um, thank you so much for coming out and spending so much time with us on this Halloween. Um, Please promote your guide business. Uh, where can people find it if they want to go out with you? Uh, we'll we'll leave a number for Jake. You can, and uh, or they can put a number on this when when it's done. And uh, you can just contact us. We're on Facebook. We got uh, email. Uh, brothers, what is it? Brothers Fishing. Brothers Fishing Service. Yeah, Brothers Fishing Service. Uh, is it dot com? No. Uh, no. Well, let's finish stuff on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go out and email. make some memories and, and le learn a technique, um, now's a good time to go catch some big fish. Uh, we'd love to take you out, uh, teach you something, uh, make those memories that you carry with you, with your kids, and your parents, doesn't matter. Uh, a avid angler, a beginning fisherman, it, it doesn't matter to us. We're, we're there to accommodate, and we want, we want to make you have, have memories and, and learn something. You can water. you can bring your own tackle or you know we we got all the tackle and stuff and uh like jason said you know you just go out and catch fish you want to learn new techniques uh wildlife this time of year good time to catch your personal best from now until april you can catch some giants yeah. you don't get a lot of bites but the ones you get are usually pretty good and another plug too a lot we've been talking throughout the episode about fly fishing and lonnie's also avid fly fisherman so and i've seen photos of you taking guys up in the mountain yeah, streams yep. where they're chasing brookies up in the mountain yeah. streams and that's hard and a brookie's not gonna be very big but yeah. that is, being on that mountain stream running yeah. water so you do that as well so you know you might be a bass fisherman and never you know you watch river runs yeah. through and say man i can never do that but it's not hard is it no no you know, it's you got actually somebody... I, could, I could teach you to fly fish in a couple of hours and we we can actually go out on the boat and fly fish on the boat mm -hmm. here for smallmouth yeah yeah uh or perch or you know but uh, yeah fly fishing as well yeah guys link in the episode description to everything that we talked about today again uh page oh i just had that screenshot here and then the last thing would be just for a little housekeeping is i know i'm a little late on this but today has been absolutely crazy for me the patreon supporter of the week is basshead basshead thank you so much for your support you just want a gift card to jake's bait and tackle remember guys when you join patreon every monday i announce a patreon winner uh, we also have our Facebook contest that will be announced uh, tomorrow. We're going to put all the photos online tomorrow to be voted on. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to vote for who won the October uh, giveaway for that. Uh, link in the episode description to everything we talked about today. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out in the algorithm. And we're going to see you guys next time fishing the DMV. Thanks. Thanks for oh, having me. Yeah, yeah, real quick. And just, one more thing. Uh, looking ahead, you're talking about December, January, fishing the DMV, and Jake's will be at uh, Richmond X Fishing yep, Expo, Richmond January Expo. 19, 2021. So. I recommend if you've never been to that show or if you have, come on down. Uh, it's a great show, another great learning opportunity to learn about, you know, fishing. But come down and see Thomas in the booth. Yep. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you next time Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.